Bit of argy-bargy. I don't mind that. I like it when there's a bit of feistiness in the game. And good batting from Bubba. And, uh, well, this game, it's tense. Yeah, out there in the middle. Tension's running high. I can imagine, though, there's a lot on the line, isn't there? Oh, yeah. You've got, you've got to channel it in the right way, though. That's the thing. You know, because if I'm batting a Muhammad Bubba and I see him yeah, riling up the fielding team, then I think that that's probably to my advantage. Well, I'm not too sure you'd sledge Bubba at the moment after hitting 28 off and over, but uh, I don't mind seeing that. I don't mind seeing a bit of fire in the game. That's what cricket's about sometimes, isn't it? Well, they care when it comes down to it. Joel Richardson, he is going to replace his son. He's going to get this one past Shiraz Ahmed, who I think, look, he loves to hit sixes, Shiraz. He needs to get to the other end here. you got someone that's on a heater, Mohamed Baba. On a heater? He's on a heater. Yeah, I like that. Good call. He is on a heater. What about NBA Jam? Oh, when you got sunk three threes in a row, the ball would go. And everything would be on fire. Yeah. The basket was on fire and you just couldn't miss. That's what I'm picturing. Shiraz Ahmed, he has struggled with the bat today, though, specifically. He chewed up a lot of balls in the first game. And a key moment in the chase, so... He'll be very, very keen to turn it around. This is pretty well bowled by Richardson, keeping it away from Shiraz, but he does drive it down the ground for a single. Now, this will be a really good chase. Joel Richardson has been able to get the big fish mm. on occasion, and they're none bigger at the moment than Mahal Baba, because if you remove him, 57 for five, you're in pretty good shape, but if you keep him there, could still be looking at triple digits here. Yeah, big ball this. This game, it's on a knife edge at the moment. It's good to watch. Good for the neutral. And this is out this time. Look for a bit of swing back. That's good bowling. Just keeping it wide of off stump, and he's not really efficient hitting it through sort of that point region. I mean, they've got three men there. We know how strong he is when it's on the stump, so that's really good bowling. It's pretty good over, over cover. But you don't see him... Hitting too many kind of sideways on the offside. Oh, he loads this up. This one's pretty close to the stumps. It's a high wire act at the moment for Baba, but he survives. Tell you what, if he hit that out the middle, that was going miles. He sunk, swung so hard at that. Gives it away with his little footwork. It's just a little open up saying, I want the leg side here. And they do have still that same the baseball field, as we call it, with five outfielders all in front of the wicket. And so he goes sideways and gets it pretty good. Cuatro Canelas, Baba moves up into the 40s. And I think with that field, he's looking for some length that he can go square. He does. He executes the shot well. Yeah, because with this field, you've only got three on the leg side. So, I mean, when you hit it through that gap, you're always going to get four or six because square leg is in the ring and they've only got deep mid-wicket and deep mid-on. So good batting. Really impressive innings this from Baba. His team were in all sorts and he's carrying them through at the moment. Right. Talking to keepers who have dropped people on zero then watch them make 200 in a day mm. this is like a short form equivalent at the moment but this one will be six more well, there's a flying farmer that goes at the ball i think that's super rare who gave it everything he had for the result maximo six to finish the seventh and well after 28 came off at six they needed a steady up and looked like joel richardson had got them into a good position dot one dot dot but then finishing with four and a six so after seven overs, it's 73 for four. Well, the na last nine balls that Big Bubba's faced, he's hit seven boundaries. I mean, it's amazing striking. And, uh, well, this is where we're going this next. This is where we're going. 67 for four, pardon me. Just uh, getting it, getting the score right. But, yeah, we're going to stay here in Cartimo for another week. I don't know that... Uh, Corey, you've got a couple of weeks off starting next week, but you will be rejoining me in Portugal. We'll be back there together again in Cartaxia, yep. which is a fantastic ground. And then you will be with me as well for Capella in the Netherlands for the Dutch series, Corey. So that'll be great. And then I'll be heading to Bulgaria and Romania and various other locations. European Cricket Series, the domestic series, it's the same high-paced format. And you can catch it on our YouTube channel, ECN European Cricket Network, Mondays to Saturdays, of course. You can also catch it on Fancode if you're watching on the subcontinent. So all of you that might be joining us here to watch your country represented in the ACL, we hope you can join us whenever you're available. And that's what's beautiful about it. You can pop in for uh, an hour or two or maybe the whole day. Oh, that's a no-eat. Has to be. Oh, wow. And that's going to give Bubba a free hit. He's gone to bowl a dart first ball and yeah, he's got it all wrong. So that's a no-eat. And big Bubba, he gets the free hit. And I've got some rare on as a spin option. Right? So... Has you he got much spin during no, the week? He's not, generally, he's not. And he is carrying an injury, though. So they're improvising with him as a spinner. 
That wasn't too anything too slow about that first one. No, it wasn't. The keeper's going back because that was very quick. Well, the keeper's going. Yeah, because he, he's saying, well, I'm just going to cover the angle. Yeah, I rate that. I but, like that. I, I, and I suppose they don't worry if they give away a run. Yeah, I guess that's smart because they had to change a striker so you can do that. I don't know how much he's stopping by going that far. No, back. because if you get a feather edge, that's actually a good tactic. I don't mind that. Yeah, true. But I mean, it's a free hit. But off, Yeah, I know, but off the spinner. Like and if they give a single at the moment, they don't mind because they don't want Bubba yeah. on strike. Correct. That's, that's a question. Well, it's definitely not spin. This is sort of like quick, medium pace, and well, he's thrown his gloves down. I reckon that's hit him in an awkward spot. You can see he might be in a bit of pain here. Shraz Ahmed. Oh, yeah. They say don't give it a rub, but he's giving it a rub. He's giving it away here. Back thigh. And, oh, well, yeah. I'm from the don't rub school, but I don't think that Shraz Ahmed went to that school. Well, there's Martins. Happy birthday, Martins, from our crew at Spring Productions. Yeah, I'll have to work out why he's not working, but <laughs> no, Martins. We've loved having you here. And it's been a day of a few birthdays, and Martins, part of our crew. We had the other Martins we've got here. He had his birthday earlier in the tournament and I now know that Dan Weston has his birthday as well today. Anybody else out there that has a birthday let us know in the chat. Happy birthday Dan. Just celebrating with a good old Latvian tradition, beer at lunchtime and well where's Magic Spray yeah, Mary? Where when you know, here we here go. it comes. Uh, here comes the Magic Spray. Well I tell you what this spray it's, it's like the magic beans in the beanstalk. As soon as this goes on he will recover. Magic Spray Mary. She's getting out there pretty quick. And uh, hopefully she can get this magic spray on soon. Yeah. There we go. She's been and pretty busy this she tournament. She's almost player of the series, what I think. They, what do they there we go. Let's get a big zoom in on this. What do they put in that spray? Because I guarantee he's okay. Oh, yeah, he'll be able to run off. He'll probably run like a 9.8 second 100 metres now. <laughs> <laughs> sure was on it. Oh, there's the if he has to. How good have the fans been this hey, week? Give yourselves a big round of applause in the fan zone. We love having you guys here. And uh, let's give Magic Mary... <laughs> Magic yeah. Mary. Let's get around Magic, Magic Mary. Magic Mary. He's a big round of applause. Uh, probably the biggest cheer all week. Yeah. you got to love it. <laughs> almost like raises the Magic Spray like a bat after 100. Well, the sprays, the sprays worked. We're back to the action. Serious question coming up yep. after this ball. Talk to me. From, from Samaret. Spears it in, almost a chance. Wow, oh, how's the umpire? That's big Tyrone Peters. He hit the deck hard, didn't he? Well done from the ump there. And it's half a chance, but he thought that was going to go straight into his noodle. Yeah, and Simmerer gets a hand to it. And, yeah, I mean, this would have been a sensational catch for his good fielder. Well, Tyrone, he didn't see that if it was caught, because he'd bailed by then. Good movement for the big fella, isn't it? That's why you have two umpires out there. In case you lose one. <laughs> so look, look at this. The keeper's back on the ring again. They're happy with the one. You're basically giving him a walk if he misses the ball. Dead, Dead ball, ball called. Yeah, he wasn't ready. He wasn't looking up. Yeah, okay. But yeah, I mean, we haven't seen this before. It's a clever tactic. I like it. I've saying. talked about this for a long yeah. time. Yeah. In this situation where you're feeling like it's such a mismatch between the strikers, potential strikers, so I don't mind it. Bye bye, won't be bothered. As he goes straight, and he goes long, and he goes strong. Maximo! Barbarian stuff from Mohamed Barbar as he moves to 54 off 27. Here's the counter-attacking innings that his team needed. The former captain has come up with six, six sixes and three fours in this knock. Crucial knock for Pakai Camp. I've been here five weeks. I've seen 30 teams. This is the innings of the tournament for me so far. And he wants more. This is almost into the gap. It is, in fact, it's four. Not too many gaps in that field, but he hits this hard. The counter-attack continues. Baba's plundering here in qualifier two. Yeah, do you think that's a fair call? Innings of the tournament? I mean, we've seen 100 and we've seen things, but in the context of what this pressure was, this is yeah. phenomenal batsmanship. I'd agree. Last ball the overs here, probably be up now. Uh, oh. No matter where you are, because that one is going into the jungle. Maximo, a magical eight. Back I care, have exploded to life. After eight overs, it's 87 for four. Can you tell me what they were on after five overs? Because this is remarkable hitting. Barber's, he's lost the plot. He's smoking everything. And he was a bit careful before. So after five, they were 28. Now they doubled that with 28 in the sixth. What and they had 11 in the seventh and 20 in the eighth. So, so that's like, 60 in the it's 59 in the last three overs. Wow. I mean, we said they dropped him on six. He's probably the one man you don't want to drop. And it was a simple chance. And look at that worm. She's only going north. It's going to Everest. Oh, that is. Surf's up. 
Can you believe this? Well, what a comeback. This just sums up T10 cricket. The ebbs and flows of T10. It's a remarkable format. And they didn't go the specialist spinner. up. Uh, try some Marat. Doesn't really work out. Tell you what, I'm glad I came in for this. This is fantastic <laughs> to watch. Well, here's the thing. You need to try and just pull yourself back as a field inside now and say, look, we're not out of the game here. 87 for four. If you can get Bubba, if you can keep him to say 10 and 10, you're chasing 107. Yep. That's more or less a pass score based on what we've seen in the series. I think you'd probably be happy with a one here. I mean, if you get a boundary bonus, but if it's a one, that's also good to get Bubba back on strike. Probably not time to talk about it. Keeper, I think, should have come up the last ball because you don't want to just give him one if you miss it to retain the strike. Good point. Anyway, let's move on. This is hit straight by Shraz Ahmed, who does his job. And so this will just be a single. Honestly, so the way Bubba hits it, it looks like an overgrown man with a toy bat, and it yeah. goes miles. Oh, he's, he's a colossus. Back on care, breathing a bit easier. You've got to keep it outside off stump to him. We've got the baseball field again. You can't get too straight. Will Pershard. This time's hit inside out. Not quite out of the middle. Just one. That's probably a good result. The farmers at the moment. Well, farmers just need to take a breath here because I still think they'd be pretty happy overall. I mean, they've lost the momentum at the moment, but if they can keep them under 105, I think they'll still be confident of chasing that. It's almost like he flicked a switch after the first half was finished and the sixth over clicked over. Baba has been on a rampage. Now Shroz Ahmed tries to get on it, but it is going to carry. Well, Maximo! Shiraz, who hasn't had the best day with the bat, and even this one wasn't quite out of the screws. If there was a fielder there, I think he's catching it, but it was into the gap. Six runs to Pakai Kerr. Yeah, well, valuable six, and if he gets going as well, they're going to get something over 115. He sort of just swats at it, lands in a hole, but goes all the way, got plenty of bat on it. What a comeback. Back to live action. And there he tries the same shot again, but this time it's guarded. In fact, he hits it so badly, it'll just be a single. Well, I was reading the YouTube chat about 20 minutes ago. People were saying chokers and what a, going out in straight sets and things like this. What championship teams do, they can get out of any sticky situation. Yeah. And we're watching it now. It's a reverse choke for me. <laughs> it's because you, you're thinking that's what you're seeing. Well, Bubba's getting funky. He's walked down the wicket. He whacks it real hard. But straight at the fielder. I haven't seen him do much of that all tournament. The bowler was at the top of his mark and he just started walking down. Interesting. Yeah, he's just saying, well, I mean, this is where you can still bowl wider then, can't you? If you're a little Pershard. But the other alternative is you could spear one into the stumps and challenge him. But uh, yeah, Pack I care. It just seemed like everything was going wrong, but this innings from Baba has turned everything around. Last ball the over. You can swing at this one, Shiraz Ahmed. He does, he misses, and they won't take the run. So again, defensive keeping position, saying he can have a run, but I think that over's been called. And so <laughs> at the end of that, strange moment, you only find it here on ECN. The score now is 97 for four with one over remaining. I think that's quite interesting. They were foxing each other to see if he would take the single, but I actually agree with Pac I Care's tactic there not to take yeah. it because Bubba's got the potential to hit a 20 run over. I think it's worth more than one run to have him on strike. Yep. It almost, if it was a little kind of open market, like on the free market, mm. and say, look, here's a run, you know, I want the strike. <laughs> so that's essentially what we saw. I like that. I like seeing two teams trying to outwit each other, though. It's a good tactic, and why not? Outfoxing each other. I mean, let's not forget, Bubba was dropped on six. He's made 60 more. Yeah, and oh, James Pershard, he would know that. He would know. He had a fairly regulation chance. I'll tell you who's going to no. bowl like the wind as well. I feel like Hitman's going to let it fall oh, yeah. on this one. It's, all, it's now and ever, isn't it, yeah. for him? And the other thing you think about the catch that James Pershard took yesterday to take the hat trick, it was ridiculous. That was probably one of the hardest catches we've ever seen. Yeah. And to drop one like that, that... It's kind of, that's cricket in a nutshell. And it was off this man, Kinman. Specialist 10th over bowler. Here he is bowling to Babar. Drags it now. I think they're going to go for two here. It's into the gap. I think they'll probably get there. This will be tight. They go the long way. And uh, I reckon bubba has gone here. I don't think he made it. It's I'm going to say he does make it. It's the far end from us, so we can't really tell. I can tell. I reckon he's just short. I'm going to go out on a limb and I say... We've got a terrible angle here. Well, this is a big moment in the game. Yeah, it is. He's dismissed. You get a new batsman coming yeah, in for, for the sure. last five balls. Just I reckon he's just out. Let's see. Oh, it's close. Yeah, this might, is why they, wrong with my eyes, mate. This is why I'm wearing your jacket. <laughs> I want to be you. <laughs> nothing wrong with my eyes. 
Good running from Big Bubba. Umpiring from 100 metres. Because you can always say if you're wrong, you can always blame the fact that you're far away. Anyway, five to come, 99 the score. Goes short, and this one is high in the air. It's out of here. Maximo Baba up to 74. He swings his way into the 70s, and that shot brings up the 100 for Pakai Care. What was a pipe dream a few overs ago, but now they have 105 and counting. Innings of the tournament so far. Phenomenal batting under all the pressure. He stayed there for his team, and he's still going. Four balls left. Anything can happen here. Low to Durgesh, who's watching from Finland. Good to have you tuning in. Four to come. Wide. Oh, now do, yeah. Look at this. They don't take the run. I like it. I like it. I like the cat and mouse. I like the you're foxes. He already, already got a run. I mean, what would be different is if someone was there that was hitting him as like, well, half as well or better than Bubba. That's not Shiraz Ahmed at the moment. <laughs> so... Oh, I reckon Bubba's calling for a new bat, but surely there's nothing wrong with that one. I mean, he's still clattering. He's 74 of 33. Didn't even hit that one. He just knows a little crack after that last six. I think batsmen get rid of bats too easily when there's a little crack. I, keep, I mean, he just hit a ball about 65 that's, metres. That's normally uh, when they're at their best, when they're about to go, because they've got a bit more elasticity. Why is that? Yeah, is that... I just think that at the point of impact, there's a bit of extra... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a bit of extra motion. Elasticity is probably the word that I'd use. I mean, it can't be that bad. He's been hitting it absolutely miles, so 106 for four. But for me, honestly, Vinny, this is innings of the tournament. We've been here five weeks. We've yeah. watched some phenomenal batting, but this innings under pressure, sensational. Vinny Sandu here. Mr. Maximo with oh, Mr. Maximo Jr. wearing my jacket. I'm still wondering when I'm going to get that back. Yep. But, uh, I mean, you, talk, you talked about it. The context of the game, this could be the innings of the tournament. You know what? But no matter what they score, this game's only half over, and we know... That farmers are a highly skilled cricket team. They've been getting better and better as the week goes on. Right now, being put to their toughest test yet. Kinman doesn't release. So I don't know if that was just a matter of losing the run or maybe just wanted to get a look at what the batter was doing. No, I think he just lost his run up at the very end there. Dead ball, still four to come. Slight delay. Okay, it's exciting. Okay, miss hits this one, it hangs in the air, and it doesn't carry. Tell you what, probably should have been using the other bat. <laughs> that bat <laughs> well, doesn't sound like it's got much of a middle. Here's the thing, though. If you're not taking the one to the keeper, then why do you take that one? Quick, well, uh, because eventually, I mean, you don't, you, you can't guarantee he's going to hit every ball for six. You need, still need to be getting some singles, and Ahmed has yeah. hit one six. I get what you mean, yeah. but you've got to take no, a couple I'm not even runs. saying it's wrong. I'm just, it's a question. <laughs> one reason... Because this time he gets the run on his score rather than if he misses it. Ah, <laughs> Selfish reasons. I like it. Three to come. Shiraz's turn. And he edges a four. So, well, everything coming up. Pakai Can now has the wheels are well and truly off. And Pakai Can now up to the Nelson. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Remind me again. Were they on 28 after five? Yeah, wait till I give you the second half. This is unbelievable. They're, at the moment, they're 83 and counting off the second half. Wow. So they're going at triple the speed that they went in the first half. Shiraz, well that's the kind of ball he was missing this morning. This time he almost misses but gets just the right amount of batting it to get a boundary. More fortune than design. What a game. Even what a they, game. Even if they get what, 115 here. Oh, 115 I mean, after being 28 or 5. That's a great effort but Farmers are not out of this at all. Oh definitely not. They've got a good batting line up. Yeah, driven hard. This will just be one. Ahmed Baba's not going anywhere. Well, Ahmed's done a good job here as well. Coming in, getting 17 off 12. He hasn't clogged it up too much. He's found the boundary a couple of times. He's done a good job. Lovely. Alex Ditsia, who's watching from Serbia. It's great uh, It's great to have you in the broadcast. He was in the series we had in Croatia. Uh, just uh, sorting out. Then everyone's got the bat that they are going to use with this last ball. And they end on 118. Oh, this is the curtain call, isn't it? 75, last ball coming up. And yeah, this is probably LBW. And yeah, he's gone. So, well, he finally misses one, but the damage is done. Kinman gets the wicket. And well, well let's just I don't, say... I don't know why you'd be given a few words. You've just been hit for 80-odd off the last five overs. So, I don't know why he's doing that. There's no need for that. And, uh, well, Pack I care. They took all the momentum after the first five and uh, no need to give a send-off. Well, we knew it was going to be spicy. And normally, that's how we, we associate with Pakai Care in the, in the field and, and with their bowling attack at Kinman. 
Okay, he'd had enough in the end. <laughs> the emotion spilling over. Shows you what it means to these players, though. And Tyrone Peters just stepping in and saying, all right, all right, take a break for now, because that's the halftime break. <laughs> I'll strap yourself in for these highlights when they come, because it's going to be a very good watch. How about Bubba, though? Let's give him some credit here, as he rescued his team from a very, very tough position. 75 or 35 with eight sixes and four fours. Here's the replay. And that last one, just nipping back, he hits him on the back leg in front of off stump. I think no doubt that that was going on to hit the stumps. And uh, yeah, just a little bit of, a little bit of uh, words. I think Charles Ahmed getting involved as well. He's not going to take a backward seat. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> you don't want to go anywhere. It's uh, in the end. Well, Jersey, they are all up against it, you'd say, but. They certainly haven't been battered out of the game completely by Pakai Care because of that terrible first half. And that second half obviously gets them a few ahead of a pass score. But we've seen these kinds of scores chase, but they will have to deal with the likes of Mohamed Cameron first up, Mohamed Babar as well. They have a well-balanced attack, Pakai Care. But as we know, things can go wrong in T10 sometimes. And well, they were going wrong here in qualifier number two early on. Well, a little bit cold for Rick, but he was back in the 11. He came in at the expense of Reese Palmer. He's a left-handed batting option for the middle. And, well, a few interesting moments first up. As Isan was living dangerously, he was able to hit that one out of here. And apart from that, there were a few going up. You see, this one was caught after Richardson missed the previous one, which was a bit of a swirl up. The blushes were saved. But then it was Cameron that had to go first ball. And this is what, the moment of the game where Farmer's just on fire. Even that went right. As Smith takes the catch at slip, the assist was from James Burchard. Well, that's a drop that was acceptable because it did result in a wicket. But after this one, a tough one, did go down to that Tribe. And this is the one where we saw Asa Tribe taking one. And uh, he had the Punjabi Chakadefat there celebration. And I can see everyone sharing their celebration with each other. This was the over though, Vinny. This was the yeah. over where all the momentum started to swing and Bubba started to clear the picket. Yeah, because what we didn't see there was Bubba getting put down behind the stumps. But yeah, when the second half rolled around, well, it was game on. And uh, they're saying, well, talk is cheap. Well, they were doing their talking with their bats here, the Spanish champions. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what they did in the back five. And Bubba, he just got going. He was hitting the ball to all parts. And he, when he hits it, it stays here. He had a lot of sixes and he just wrestled them back. And there's birthday boy on your screens there. And you can see Bubba's talking to his partners. He was pretty in tune. That was a good bit of fielding. And Tyrone Peters, the umpire there, well, the, well preservation at best, diving on the ground. And Big Bubba, he just kept the show continuing, and you can see Pank I Care appreciating it massively. They were hitting the ball to all parts. Shiraz Ahmed also got a couple of boundaries away late. And, uh, well, Pank I Care, they would have been dreaming of 100 after the first five. They got there pretty comfortably in the end. Uh, we had some chat out in the field. I'm loving our live chat as well. Yeah, we saw the last ball. That was finally the wicket. And uh, Kidman, well, he gets the decision and then says, off you go. He said, well, I was going anyway because I've just whacked 75. <laughs> And the runs are on the board. And uh, a few people saying they want to hear the stuff bikes turned up. <laughs> we could have an adult channel option as well. But look, you know, I'm not saying it's something I like to see. But what it does show me is these guys are passionate about sticking around. And that guy care. And then they do get to 112. Look, farmers, they didn't give away too many extras. Um, yeah, just bah -bah. You almost went, Where those wickets went down in the first half, you almost shut up shop just making sure that he would be there for the second half. And when he did, well, he really turned it on. 75 off 35. Shroz Ahmed, well, he was an ally towards the end. And slightly better from him. 17 not out of 12. And so they will be defending that 112. And for me, it's all about the start. I mean, Cameron, he can almost kill the game early. But conversely, if Farmers can get hold of him and maybe get 10s off his over, mm. well, I think we'll have game on. If we go to the bowling figures in a moment, I think we'll see. That's... Uh, it's a tale of two halves. Two for seven. Pershard was swinging it around corners early. And then when that second half came, there were some figures that did get some damage. Yeah, absolutely. You can see Richardson went for a, fu a few too many there. And, well, they tried to stick with it. And at one stage, it was four for 26 before it was five for 112. A remarkable comeback. And Bubba, for me, innings of the tournament, irrespective if they go on to win or lose. Yeah, true. Oh, he sucked up the pressure and he turned it into Maximos in the first half of this qualifier too. One of these two teams will get the honour of beating Punjab Lions Nicosia in the final later on this afternoon. And one of them 
their ECL journey will be over. Find out which one when we return in just a few minutes. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion to qualifier two. It'll be 113 victory, 113 victory target for Farmers of Jersey. Any sound to hear Mr. Maximo alongside Corey Ruckers. Hope you're having a great final Friday. We're just getting spicy. See you here shortly for more Bet to Ball European Cricket League.
Welcome back to the European Cricket League, brought to you by bet ball and Kiba Inu. Well, 30 clubs started their ECL journeys back in February. And now only seven teams remain with a chance of lifting that magnificent ECL trophy. Thanks to our partners at Local Lifestyle. It's the Champions League of European Cricket, 144 matches over six weeks. One location, broadcast globally on the European Cricket Network. Certainly hope you're enjoying Finals Friday here in Group E so far. We're down to three in Group E. A group of excitement, I called it at the start of the week, and certainly doesn't get much more exciting than this. As Farmers of Jersey, they are 113 runs away from a date in the final with Punjab Lions Nicosia from Cyprus, who shocked Pakai Care previously undefeated this morning. And now this 10 overs will determine which of these two teams will move forward and which one will have to move aside in ECL 22. Vinny Sandu here, Mr Maximo for the European Cricket Network. Joining me, former ECL winner in 2019 and current Spanish team national coach, Corey Ruckers. And Corey, we're about to see the Hitman do his thing. Yeah, looking forward to this, Vinny. And I reckon this would be a close match. And uh, Hitman, well, I think he's the leading wicket taker in Group E. No surprise. Here we go. Buckle up. This one's worked away. Now they go for a slightly dodgy run. Get away with it. Sumer has been sent out to open the batting. So, yeah, I have seen them opening fairly regularly with the Tribes. And now, they've made a slight change here with Sumer, who they probably feel that he is their kind of best technical batter. Mm. Also, he did see them home in the previous game. So they decided to open with him with Ace of Tribes. Is that form. form? Yeah. yeah no, sometimes I don't mind that. If the batsman's in form, get him out there while the power plays on and see if he can get him off to a good start. I mean, they're right in this game. Also, you know, risk whoever you send out against against Cameron, who's been taking wickets in the first over. I, I can't think of an over this week he hasn't taken a wicket in the first over. I think there's only been one, yeah. I think. Ace of Tribe, your turn. Yeah, digs out the Yorker. It's pretty. Oh no! Oh, that was a dodgy run in the end. <laughs> it's a tribe. Does want to dig it out, but almost digs himself into a, an early dismissal. That's good for you. That's Mohammed Yassin. He's been out with the flu the last few days and he's back. And uh, well, really good movement from him there. Almost forced to run out. And uh, good fielding. So two singles. Both batsmen off the mark. Always makes you feel a bit more comfortable. Cameron not really getting that ball to swing. It's sometimes funny, the, the yeah. quicker the bowler, it doesn't swing as much, whereas yeah. a medium pacer can get it to go. Yeah, again, that's one thing that science hasn't really explained to us. Mm. Cameron, he's also got a pretty good short ball. Oh, seed. Yeah, that's a seed that just goes straight across him. And I'll tell you what, Hitman's got a face on him like he means business today. That's an absolute jaff up going across the right-hander. I mean, if you can't swing it, just take it across him. Yeah, that's the danger, because he can bring it back. And then this one kind of just like holds its line. Uh, hit man, man, a few words, but yeah, he's, I like he's quite expressive. We saw a few words exchanged at the end of the first half of this game. Yeah. This one hurries the batter, camera picks it up, moves well for a big man, doesn't yeah. he? So, what's your strategy if your farmer's here? Are you happy just to see Cameron off without losing a wicket? Like, how many runs do you think they're hoping to get off his two overs? I think you're just batting. You're b b batting on merit. I mean, if he bowls a perfect two overs, you just respect it. And if he gives you a loose ball, you still try to put it away. I don't think you're playing a loose shot. I don't think you're going for the big maximum over square leg or something like that. Just yeah. play it on merit. Feels like, you know, they can't win the game in this first power play, this first three overs, but they could probably lose the game. Mm. If you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, they're just going to stay in it. That's quick, but it's probably a wide, though. That's one of the very few times that he's got his bouncer a little bit too short. So he's signaled a wide, and that's yeah. the one bouncer for the over. It was too high, but do you think, it gives away a run, do you think that's tactical, that it was up too high on purpose? No. Because I was going to say, now he gets two more balls to try and take a wicket. No. You no, no. So? He, he Am I just going crazy here? No, you are going crazy. It was crazy. just so high. No, he usually gets it perfect, but as a bowler, you can't get every delivery at the right height. Well, he goes straight at the nose. Wouldn't have hit a giraffe's nose. Shot. shot. Yeah, really nice shot through the offside. This is for Ace of Tribe. Kind of think the next one would be pitched up because he spent the short ball. And, uh, well, a lot of words flying from the dugout to the middle as well. Farmers get their first boundary. Yeah, so that's what I mean by just playing it on merit. So he's over-pitched there and he puts his hands through it. It's a lovely cricket shot. And uh, four runs. And that's going to give them a bit of confidence going forward in this run chase. Comeback ball. Last ball of the over. 
play fairly confidently. It's knocked down by Majid Hanif at point. So end of an entertaining over. I think Farmers will take that. They don't lose the wicket. It's nine for no loss after one. Yep, nine for no loss. They'll be happy with that start. And uh, well, Bubba will probably come on with the new ball here. Cameron not really getting it to go too much in that over. I think he's bowling a little bit within himself. I know he's got a, a bit of a tight glute. So good start this by Farmers. You can see they're pretty pumped up in the dugout, aren't they, Vinny? Yeah, why not? It's the thing, I think you're often more nervous when you're off the field. Because when you're on the field, you can do something about it yeah. uh, most of the time. And it's going to be all that training and all the hours you've put in. It's when it pays off. And so, now we're going to see Muhammad Baba, his regular opening partner. Baba, how well did he bat? I mean, 75 of those 112 runs on the board were off his bat. Well, can he take that batting form into his bowling form? Usually, all-rounders, it, it does go both ways. You take that confidence into the into the other side of your game. And he's going to come in. He's had a good tournament with the ball as well. Pushed and we'll get one here because the long on is back. We had the poll in the chats and thanks to everyone that took part at the halfway point. 62% thinking Pak I Care would, would win from this position and 37%. Farmers, what do you think? 62-37. Yeah. What was the other percent? Margin of error. <laughs> I, think with, I think it's to do with rounding. So, you know your maths. I'm impressed. I'm pretty impressed there. Yeah. Calculator out. Yeah, A minus. Yeah, nice shot. He walks out at Babar and he just flicks this away somewhere. It's a pretty good idea to get him up there as soon as possible. And he hits this one nicely for four over the leg side. Yeah, that's a good shot. Sort of just shuffles down the ground and goes a little bit outside off stump so he can get it under his eye line and uh, sort of just flicks it away over square leg. Good batting, four runs. And uh, Jersey, good start here in this run chase. They need a good power play, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's going to help. You and I were talking in the halftime break about where we thought they'd need to be. We kind of said 30s, mid-30s. Mm. 30, uh, 35 to 40 after four overs. Oh, he's edged this, it's going to be four. So uh, it was a very thin edge, but just thick enough to evade the keeper, Muhammad Issa. Sumeria gets lucky and he gets four. Yeah, you can't do much about that. It can be a cruel game to be a bowler in sometimes. The thin edge flies away for four. Didn't give the keeper a chance there either. Just enough wood on it. Yeah, that's frustrating. This would be a good view of it. Yeah, it's a substantial edge, isn't it? Straight to, if they had a slip in there, which we saw a bit in the first half of this game. It's a rarity though. Don't yeah. usually see too many teams That's operate the, with a slip. That was the rebound catch as well. Yeah. Alright, Sumeria up into double figures. Made a good start. Now, this one's in the air and it's taken. It's flicked away and this time it was in the range of Sakana Ali. Well, that's a good moment for him. He scored a golden in the first half of this game, but the second half starts well for him. And so it's a dangerous play on Sumeria. Not just timing that the way that he wanted, and it gave Sikanda a chance and he took it 18 for one. Yeah, I give a lot of credit here to Sikanda Ali because he's moved well to his right. He's got two hands to it. And in a pressure game, you have to take these half chances. And that's a really good snare at mid-wicket. He moved so well. And that's a big, big wicket uh, because we know how dangerous he is. He smacks his bat into the ground and Bubba, well, he's having an unbelievable T10 match. Sure is. I think it was 75 that he scored with the bat. And I know that in fantasy points, the wicket's worth 25, so there's his 100 right there. Muhammad Babar, and now Zach Tribe, comes in to join his brother, coming in the number three position. Yeah, big wicket, big, big wicket. I mean, they're pretty heavily reliant on this top three, aren't they, Vinny? Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. And I think they're the ones that have done most of the damage in this, in this tournament for farmers. I think their middle order isn't quite as used to what's required in these situations. I think even when they have played T10, T20, it's a much bigger field. You can score kind of your 10 and over by pushing and running hard a lot more than just a higher boundary percentage, which yep. is required in these conditions. Anyway, it's Zach Tribe who will face up to Mohamed Babar. It's a little bit short. Doesn't quite time it. Just be a single. Yep, deep third man and deep square leg are uh, the boundary riders. So just a single there. And uh, yeah, a lot of pressure pressure on the Tribe brothers, isn't it? You, you'd think one of these two needs to be there by the 7th, 8th, ninth over if they're going to go close in this chase. I spoll this over coming up. Do you roll Cameron again? Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a new ball bowler, yeah. and, and he usually has a good power play. I mean, you could hold on to it's him. What, it's what they normally do. Just want to get your thoughts. It's a little leg lap. He picks out the fielder. And Will Hustle through for one. That'll be the end of two. And the score, 20 for one. Yeah, even though it's a preliminary final, it's a big game, I think I like teams sticking to their methods that have worked for them in all tournament. And even though they had a loss this morning, Pack I Care have won seven and lost one. So they're doing something well. And you see there as they scampered through for a single. So it will be cam round to continue. And the reason for that as well is if you bring in another bowler to finish the power play, what if he goes for 15-20? Yeah, true. Well, just a reminder, oh. can, it's our last chance to go look at your mug there for a while. It's pretty sad to hear Mr. Max <laughs> along with Corey Rutgers. Now, Corey, it is your last game. Just a reminder, you can follow us on social media, Mr. Maximo, or CRuckers underscore 28. It's Corey been Rutgers. emotional. Yeah, and don't forget, at European Cricket, that's the place you can go for all the action. There's been some good stuff put on. There's a big... Camera and compilation. I don't know if you saw that on the socials this morning. And here he is in the flesh. Pitched up, driven, but no run. Yeah, look, the only exception I would say to Owen Cameron 1 and 3 is we saw the Punjab Lions this morning hold a couple of their regular top order back, yep. particularly Guri. So you did have to face him up front. I think that then I probably would just keep one over of Cameron in my back pocket for when Big Guri comes out. But then who the closes meetings. the power play? Oh. Anybody? Got a few options. Oh, yeah. Good short ball. That's a really good ball because he sort of went to the leg side to give himself a bit of room. He followed him, and I don't even think that's the one for the over, which is actually quite important. Just sort yeah. of about that chest up because that means he can... And you can see the batsman asking yeah. if it is one for the over, but it's not. Yeah. It's a, it's a line ball one, but I think my instinct would have been to say it was just below the shoulder or it wasn't above the shoulder. Well, it means he still has one in the locker he yeah. can use. Top ball as well, of course. Useful. Beats him from pace. That's the tribe. Survives. He's getting a bit quicker now, isn't he? That first over sort of going through the motions a bit. Now he's getting that pace up as we know he can. Three dot balls. And closing of the power play is also so important. Yeah. Look, let's just take a moment to appreciate the outstanding entertainment that we've got on here on the European Cricket Network. I mean, you won't find this kind of cricket anywhere else in the world. Oh, well, some of them might be yawning, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. Oh, get some bat on this. Well, right off, though. Four dot balls, and I mean, it's so important to close your power play as well. These last two balls are massive. They're going to want at least one boundary, you'd imagine. And uh, Muhammad Cumran, when he's not taking wickets, he's still very difficult to get away. It's good bowling. He's bowling a heavy length. Maybe a cross bat shot might be on here, because if you, if you edge it, it'll fly anyway. Risky shot, though. Is it? Now you've burnt four balls. You really don't want to lose a wicket, right? Mm. Oh, seed. Absolute seed. Well, it's five dot balls. That could have easily taken the edge. Hitman, well, he feels like he probably should have had one then. Just beats the outside edge. What a ball, Vinny. <laughs> Good that, luck. That flew through, didn't it? Good luck it? hitting this. I don't know what shot you need to play. This. It's pretty hard to drive. Just going... He just gets a bit of purchase across. I mean... Hitman, oh, he wanted one, didn't he? Five dot balls. I mean, imagine if he bowls a maiden in the context of this match. Well, here's the thing. This could be his last ball of the series <laughs> if they chase this down. True. So he'll be he'll be straining for that extra pace this time. Last ball of the power play. Oh, well. No, it's it's not his yet. last ball of the series. Loves to, loves to build up. There's five dot balls, though. He's got a cheeky smile on his face. I think he just lost his footing as he hit his mark there. Can happen. Still got a short ball up his sleeve, right? What are you thinking? Sure. I think he's going at the stumps. I, I, think, I think that's his go-to. Nah, he's going heavy length across the batsman again. He's going in swinging Yorker. Oh, it hasn't swung, so that'd be impressive. Yeah, he's been saving it. Last ball. Oh. That's Sorry. a maiden. A maiden over. Six dots. Join them. And so they burn the third over, but they don't lose it. We get to Cameron, who finishes with none for nine here in qualifier number two. At the end of the power play, it's 20 for one. You know a bowl is really good when you feel like none for nine isn't a good day? But that is phenomenal. I mean, he's bowled T10 none, cricket. Yeah, none for nine in a T10 match, bowling a maiden to close the power play. He's a special, special bowler. And those six stop balls, a maiden to finish, brilliant from him. Yeah. What do you think in the chat? Let us know. <laughs> Cameron Sanders, like your comments in there as well. Keeping it humorous for us in good fun as well. It's great entertainment. Well, there'll be a tooth missing from that bottom row. 
Because the third over won't have any runs at all. It's pretty rare you see him, Aiden, isn't it? I mean, the third over of the first innings was pretty good as well. It was Chuggy Pershard that bowled his second on that occasion. And uh, from memory, I think he took two for one. So now we move into the middle overs. Muhammad Babar, well, he's going to do his regular thing and bowl the fourth. Five outfielders in play now. This is hit hard into the gap. It's going to be four. Oh, Zach Tribe only faced the one delivery. He's had a good look from the other end, but now it's his turn. He gets a boundary. It just starts. Farmer's moving. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good shot. Just back of the length, and he absolutely smoked it through mid-wicket. Four runs, one bounce, four. Yeah, it's all about the placement that time. Minhoff's up in the circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of delivery just chips it into the leg side for one. It's going to be pretty interesting to see after Bubba's over. The, the six overs are remaining is the key, isn't it? I mean, to Bubba and Cameron, we know what they deliver. Yeah, so but the this is what makes them so dangerous. They've got good follow-up options. Mm. They've got good variety. They've got the spin of Sikandar Ali, the spin of Adil Shafkat. They've got... Uh, options like Atif Muhammad, who's a left arm pacer. Yeah. They've got. I think Atif Muhammad should bowl two today. You think so? Yeah. They've even got bowls like Muhammad Mochim. Well, he was, he was player of the match the other day. And they've left out Hassan Ali, who's a really good bowler as well. So, sport for choice. This one's going nowhere. And, uh, good throw on a good length as well. This may be sending a message. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And uh, Batsman was out of his crease, having a throw. Yes, I mean, I look at some of the players left out. Asad Abbas not in the 11. He made way for Yassine, uh, which offers him a bit more batting, but we didn't actually need to see Yassine in the end. Uh, yeah, but Hassan Ali in particular, he's, he's a very good bowler. Not making the team. Mm. Can't get this one, looking to pull, but... Asad Tribe just hasn't got going as well as we know he can at the moment. He's 9 off 13. How's that required rate going? But, while it, but Bubba did the exact same thing, didn't he? He didn't yeah. get off to a good start. So while you're there, you've still got the chance to capitalise later on. And we talked about them needing to be kind of 35 to 40 after 4 to be in the hunt. Yep. So despite having plenty of wickets in hand, they're just a little bit behind where they need to be. He's going to go hard at this ball. Doesn't get that opportunity. Cut away. Long chase for the man at the offside. I think they could have gone two yeah. if they went straight away. There was a slight fumble, but they settled for one. Yeah, just the one. And two tribes. I assume they'd be able to run between the wickets well, but with brothers, it doesn't always work out that way. And a lot of teams will run hard that first one, and on any fumble, they'll go. Yeah. It's that understanding and the lack of hesitation on the second run that will allow it. Last ball of the fourth. Bubba's conceded 18. Picked up one wicket. And, yeah, doesn't give him anything to work with here. So that's the end of four overs. The score now is 28 for one. So they've got it sevens through the first four overs. And that score, that right now required is about 14 and over. So, look, that's not going to be easy. And it won't be easy to say goodbye to this man, Corey Rutgers, because we've really loved having you. You were meant to be here just for four weeks. You've stuck around for a fifth. That's great. No, you can't keep the jacket. I'll need that back. But, uh, no, how's your ECL experience been? It's been great to have you. No, it's been sensational. I'm lucky to be here all through the group stages. So I saw 30 magnificent teams. I've seen amazing cricket, some brilliant bowling, brilliant batting. It's been pretty special. Yeah, well, one next time we'll probably see you here will actually be for the ECC, which oh, yeah. is the international tournament a bit later in the year. We had some breaking news here that this has now been released the groups and we have 21 countries represented in the ECC this year yep. uh, England will automatically qualify for week five and we'll have five different countries every week you can check that out also on our social media at European Cricket and there's been a bit of discussion in the chat about that already so certainly seeing that tournament growing getting bigger and better every year Sikanda Ali now Vinny this is the key how are they going to play the spinners can they get them away uh, yeah, well, they need to find something in their zone and go hard at it. We'll get something a bit short. He just misjudges the pace of this, but he still gets it good enough into the gap. Ace the drive gets four. Again, it's all about the placement. It's kind of early. It probably was a little bit short. And off to the boundary, Cuatro Carreras. Yeah, absolutely. It was short and hits it right in that gap between middle and mid wicket. I see the ball go here all the time. I'd love to see teams put a man there more often. But uh, yeah, Sikand Ali has to be careful not to get too straight. And after a good start in the first four overs, he needs to continue it for Pack Eye Care. Whereas Farmers, they're probably thinking this is the over they can maybe cash in. 
Okay, 14 and over required. You pretty much need 10 and over in boundaries, like a six and a four. Mm -hmm. So maybe or two sixes or, you know, six and a four or something like that. It's hard to do it with just one boundary in the over. Oh, that's a long hop. Gets away with it, just a wide, but Sikanda Ali just angling it in the moment. Maybe a little bit nervous. Yeah, be natural. A huge game. Yeah, they elected to chase, and that's what they're doing, farmers. Yeah, Goes for this, but doesn't quite get it. Should be an easy catch for Cameron. Well, he'll take the catch. No mess, no fuss. And so, well, after trying to up the ante, Zach Tribe, and he's going to fall on his sword. And uh, he'll be hoping that's not the last time that he's out in the middle in the European Cricket League. He falls for 11. He's going out 34 for two. Yeah, that was the most relaxed catch by hit, uh, by Hitman out there. And Sikanda Ali, this time he gets the, the line and the length right, keeps it outside off stump, and he gets a wicket. So it's right up against it at the moment of Farmers. And uh, here comes a man to the crease. He needs to play a really good innings. It's Charles Perchard. Yeah, Chuggy is going to come to the crease at number four. Zach Tribe had a pretty good week. He's caught well. White just like him applying his skills to the top of the order with the bat. And so Charles Perchard, the Jersey national team captain. Certainly a lot of experience. Uh, this will be a different sort of experience you'd imagine. And so he's going to need to go at 14.4 at the moment. 144 pace. It's, it's a lot of runs, isn't it? You're not out of it yet. I mean, we've got to remind ourselves, Pakai here with 28 after five. Yeah, no, for sure. And they ended up with 112. So they're ahead of what they were at this comparative stage. Yeah, it is going to take something special, but they're not out of it. I think what you need is an outstanding individual performance. Yeah, to, it does to, happen. to go at that kind of rate. So that's no, what, for that's, sure they can do it. That's what T10 cricket is. Outstanding individual performances at the right time. Hard to see them doing it if they keep losing wickets. That's the thing, though. They're not going to piece it together. Well, this one just gets a little tickle on it. And will be two. cut off. Yeah. They don't go for two in the end. Chuggy so chucked along that first run. There's a tiny bit of bat. Well, Asa Trom's faced 15 balls at the moment for, for 11. He's faced 25% of the innings. He really needs to get going. He's the set batsman. We know how powerful he can be. He needs to start getting the ball away. Close as well down the other end. Oh, that's a nice moment. Well, that's a nice bit of sportsmanship in a fiery game. These two teams, they all end up shaking hands at the end of the game, I'm sure. And uh, burying the hatchet. That was good, just slid onto him, beat him for pace. And this is one he has to get rid of, and he doesn't. He finds the fielder who holds on. That was a bit of an ice cream cone from Abid Maboob, almost put, popped out of his hand. But he does take the catch and try it. Oh, his labour is over. He also goes for 11, but he's used 17 balls up. And Farmers, they're in a bit of a jam now at the end of... Five overs, they're 35 for three. Yeah, not a good T10 innings, that. I mean, if you're going to take time to get yourself in, you don't need to capitalise. And in the end, he goes 11 off 17. And Pakai Care, they'll be feeling pretty confident at the moment. And uh, nice safe hands in the end by Maboob. He didn't move that first. I think he thought it was going a little bit further. And uh, oh, you can see there, he stood up. Well, you don't stand up and celebrate a six when it's caught. It's a little bit embarrassing. But yeah, Pakai Care, they're keeping the noses ahead at the moment. Yeah. Probably more than a nose ahead now. Unless it's Bill Laurie's nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a bad well played. But, uh, but we've, seen, we've seen things happen. Who in this game can get them back into it? Who do you think? Pershard is the national team captain. Yeah. Right? He, can, he can bat. And uh, he's had his moments for sure. Sometimes he's just probably played a couple of shots he'd, he'd regret. Smith, the new batter. Change of over though, so we've got on strike. Chuggy gets Shiraz Ahmed. He's a current captain of Pakai Care. Ahmed Baba was a previous captain, and now this season Shiraz Ahmed taking over. And Shiraz has got a bunch of variations. Particularly I like his leg cutting slower ball. He seems to be locating pretty well in this series. Smith for the first time. Digs this out. It's good bowling. Nice and cool. Smith, he gets himself off the mark. But yeah, you sort of feel like Perchard, he has to do something pretty special, doesn't he? He's the key. Yeah. And it's so hard because they've got two basically fresh batters at the crease. That run rate required has gone up over 16. You know, when we talk about the point and no return being 18. Mm. 
Now this is in the air. Well, who's going to catch it? Hangs a long time. Isan is going to take the catch. An excellent catch by the keeper who had to go a long way. And Chuggy is going to have to go. It wasn't the best ball from Charles Ahmed. I think Isan is sucking in the big ones. And why not? I think the landing wasn't too comfortable either. But he took responsibility. He takes the catch. Farmers go from bad to worse. It's 37 for four. Well, he gets the short ball back of the length outside off. He tries to drag it to the leg side. Goes miles in the air. And what a catch this is by Ishan. He pro I think he took the wind out of himself a bit. I've been really impressed with his glove work all week. And that is a smart catch. Yeah. And the key there as a keeper is you just need to hold on to the ball. You don't want your elbows to hit the ground. If it means anything else hits the ground, then that's what you have to do. So, well, Rashad will be disappointed to go for just two. 37 for four. Oh, a tale of two keepers. I mean, remember, uh, James Pershard in the first half, he got a fairly regulation one that he put down that allowed Bubba to say at the crease. And now that one. Well, there's the half chance. Well, there's the... There's the brains crew. They're, they're the real dream team, apparently. I know you and Andrew were calling yourself the dream team. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, listen. Oh, listen. Now you're wearing my jacket. I know what you're up to. All right, it's going to be Kinman. He's got a score to settle. He's on strike now. And he goes very first ball. This could be out. Oh! What a catch by Cameron. Kinman's got to go. And, well, he's on his way. First ball. He hits it decently. But this is an outstanding catch by Mohamed Cameron. An all-round cricketer. And now Farmer's 37 for five. Yeah, what a catch. I mean, we've been so impressed with Hitman when he's got the ball in hand. But this is with the... In the field, this is an amazing catch. He runs about seven metres to his left, dives forward and takes an absolute snare. And, uh, well, have a look at this. You'll appreciate this. He hits it pretty hard. First ball and uh, hit, man. Oh, that is a snare, Vinny. It's like almost like a slips catch, right? You know how you dive from from the start and, and just shields the ball. Now, Farmers, they are in some serious trouble now. 37 for five. Not just the wickets, but they're also running out of time. 17 and a half, an over required. And here comes a guy who can can hit sixes. Rick Firth coming up. Well, Kinman was a bit lippy at the end of uh, the first innings, and cricket's a great level up. He goes for a golden. And yeah, uh, You don't know what was said the other way, let's be fair. Lefty, lefty. And, uh, look at this. Here we got Ty Rhodes showing his skills. <laughs> well, hold on. You're not allowed to... <laughs> Players are always getting in trouble yeah. for doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> He's just... Yeah, I think it's good. It's entertaining. He's a very good sportsman, Tyrone. Oh, very good. Cricket and rugby. All right. So hat trick ball. Here's Rick. Rip your hat trick. Oh, here comes Hitman. Oh, pick up throw. Oh, I reckon that's close. He charged in then. I tell you what, for a big man, he moves so well. Yeah. That would have been close, I think. Yeah, probably just in. But yeah, Rick has been carrying one or two little injuries as well. Just makes it well judged. What a comeback this is from Pack Eye Care. Yeah. Why? Yeah, this is why I never call games after five overs, Corey. You can see exactly why. And this one after six now in the second half. It is tough times ahead, you feel, for farmers. They are 38 for 39, pardon me, for five. Well, if anyone's just tuning in, at the start of this game, Pack I Care batting first with 28 for four after five overs. They, rem well, unbelievably got themselves to 112 and have just forced their way almost into this final. And you see the figures there, pretty good from everyone. And uh, they're doing the job that's required. Well, Graham Holmes saying that you're calling Kim a bit lippy. He says the Pack I Care batter started it. Move on, commentator. Well, Corey, you love a bit of chat. What would you like to say back to Graham then? Probably... Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, farmers, farmers have been a pretty lippy team all week, actually. So it happens. It happens. They started a bit out there. And we come from a brand of cricket where, and that would actually be called pleasant. Like, <laughs> certainly playing great, great <laughs> yeah, cricket. Absolutely. In anyway, but I think they've been. They'll be pretty disappointed. They came here with high hopes, and they're at the moment going to go out in the prelim, and they're going to end with a record of four wins and five losses. And I think for the Jersey side that's meant to be 25th in the world, they're meant to be better than that. It's been an experience for them, I'm sure. I'm going to subscribe to Corey's podcast. I'm sure he'll be starting soon. Well, he's going to throw this away. They could get two here, but now they've missed the opportunity. So keep your eye on the game at all times. Yeah, it's your last game, Corey. I'm going out with the bank. Corey's leaving it all on the line. 
Well, you are the Spanish. Hey, full disclosure, Corey is the Spanish national team coach. So, who would have thought little old Spain would get up over little old Jersey? It's not over yet. I mean, 20 and over, maybe. I've seen Corey's going to get blocked, and he's the one that's right next to me. Ah, shot. Good shot by Firth. Got a lot of time for him. We saw him whack a couple of sixes earlier in the week when he came out in a very tough situation. Had hit four sixes in the over. Did hit two. He's been in and out of the team with injury. But, uh, seriously, though, it's been great to, to meet the Jersey guys and, of course, all their supporters who I'm sure they're not okay. happy with how things are going at the moment. This is hanging in the air. This is going to go all the way. Maximo! Al Smith. He believes they're going to need more of that. And as Asa snacks, Smith whacks six rubs to Farmers. That's a really good shot. I mean, he gets it in the wheelhouse and just times it enough. Kept his head still. Good batting. Oh, can he go again? They need another six here desperately. Oh, that's going to no be ball. five. That's going to be five. This is where that rule really is harsh on the keeper. Because I think this is... Well, it's been given... It's been given wide, but I think this hits the edge of the pitch. Okay, maybe it technically hits the pitch, but... Yeah, but it, it, what is the rule there if it hits right on the edge? If it hits the edge of the pitch, it's meant to be a no ball. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it hits the edge of the pitch and comes back towards the stumps. Really? Yeah. So I think that's actually still been no ball. Well, that gives them a bit of a, a chance here. That's 11 off the last delivery. So and now this is... this would have been a free hit, but it's not, because mm. it's wide. Oh, I understand what you mean. Probably wouldn't have mattered in the end anyway, because he swings and misses. So it's the end of the over. Seven overs down. Oh, take a breath. And, uh, all my conflict resolution skills coming in handy as it's 52 for five after seven. He says, what is coming up? And of course, the winner of this game will meet Punjab Lions in the final. So that is about an hour and a half away from the first ball. Of course, I have the national anthems and all that before, which is always a wonderful moment for the players. Hopefully the weather holds off. So we'll have a bit of a, probably an hour and 15 minute break or so from the end of this game to the first ball of the final. So make sure you stick around. We'll find out exactly which team will join Tunbridge Wells of England, Brigade of Ireland, Precious EC of Italy, and Albi Zalmi of Sweden in Championship Week starting on Monday morning. Well, can they get maybe a 20 to 25 run overs in this one and, and give themselves a little bit of life in this match still, Vinny? Uh, it's going to be tough. Atif Muhammad comes on, left-hander to left-hander. Swing and a miss. I, I like the look of this young man. He's a really talented bowler. He's got those off-cutters that he likes to bowl as well. And uh, I think he's only 20 years 20 years old. Tall left-arm seamer. Always good to see. Yeah. He's a, he's a good young player. We've seen him developing for a couple of years now on the domestic circuit. Good fielder as well. Yep, he's on my radar, that's for sure. Decent batter as well, actually. Yeah. That's a wide. Could be. Yeah, that's going to be the one bouncer for the over. So digging it in but getting it wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I think he, yeah, he doesn't bat very high in this lineup just because how strong the lineup is. But I think he could easily bat six. Yeah? Yeah. They do bat all the way down, don't they? Yeah. We see him coming in at ten sometimes. You know, it's a sign of the strength. Talk about Jersey, though. I mean, it's been great to get to know them and, and the story of the farmer's field and how that all came about. Certainly quite unique. Well, this is skewed up in the air. And this is Shiraz Ahmed, who's under it. He takes the catch. And so it's the end of the road for Rick Firth, who tries to up the ante. Atif Muhammad takes the wicket. Farmers, well, I think they have that sinking feeling now that they know that the task has become just a little bit too difficult as they lose the six wicket, 53 for six. Yeah, wicket for the young man. He'll be happy with that. Sort of skews off the bat, goes straight up. And another one falls and Paco Care, well, we always say championship teams always find a way to win in tough, tough instances. And they're doing exactly that. Yeah. After the first five overs in this game, we thought they're in so much trouble. But at the moment, they could be onto a comfortable win. Yeah, so this will bring William Pershaw to the crease. A question from Keanu in the chat asking me, do I think that leg bias should be abolished? Because the batsman never actually uh, hit the ball with the bat. It's an interesting question. I'm going to put it this way. Short answer is no, I would leave it the same. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons is I think if you were to, I, I get what's behind it, but I think it would probably encourage a lot of defensive bowling in it, the body. Um, and then the other thing is that 
it creates another judgment call. So what if you get a little edge onto, onto your pad? Now suddenly the umpire's under more pressure yep. with those. At the moment, it's just a run. And you know, I, I don't think it's a big deal. I think often leg buys it. The result of bad bowling as well. Down the leg side, a little bit of thigh pad going for four. Yep. So no, I wouldn't change the rule. Team Hummer um, continues. And, uh, I might get a run here. It's good ball to a new batsman just on a hard length. Tell you what I would do. If I did have to change it and not allow leg buys, I would say if it hits your leg at all, you can't run. So if you nick it onto your leg, then the ball's dead. Too confusing, Vinny. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just think... There's another circumstance when you miss the ball and the keeper misses it, you can get runs, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I just don't think that would work very well. Here's a teeth. Steps across, goes leg side, could be another catching opportunity, the fielder comes in, can't quite get there. Yeah, they will come back for two. It's pretty good running, as Will Pershaw gets off the mark. Yeah, good running and uh, slightly misjudged there by, uh, by Secunda Ali out there at deep mid-wicket. Came in hard but sort of just couldn't get there in time. Two runs. Palmers still trying, trying their best. Long way away. I'd say to Keanu, Keanu saying, but cricket is all about hitting the ball and making runs off the bat. Well, yes and no. I mean, give me my final thoughts on that in a second. Oh, bold. Swings and misses. So, the other thing is, it's just about scoring runs when the ball's in play. At first, it's about protecting your stumps, not getting caught, and then if the ball's in play, you can run. So, I think leg buys, uh, not a big deal. In the context of this game, Vinny, how amazing was Bubba's innings? Oh, you called it the innings of the tournament. It's hard to disagree when you think about the the situation that he came, that he found himself in. Of course, he opened up, loads up, skews up, and uh, this time. The scene isn't going to be able to hunt it down. Bermuda <laughs> triangle situation. Oh, look, you can't discredit the keeper. He's got a lot of energy and uh, he wasn't going to get close to that, but gave it his all. Brings an end to the eighth. It's 56 for six. Another question from Tusnaya, who's asking, do I think the batting first is an advantage in T10? Uh, it's an interesting one. I actually, the more I've seen it, the more I think it probably is slightly. I, I just think that, uh, well, statistically, I think 55% of matches on ECN have been won by teams batting first. Uh, but what it is, I, I think that these middle to lower order, when they come out in the first innings and they're not encumbered by a target, they just bat with freedom, get as many as they can. I think in this, if you're batting second, there's always this scoreboard pressure, this chasing pressure. 57 off the last two. So Vinny, in this um, this Group E, it's been pretty remarkable. We've seen the Cypress team there in the final. We, it looks like Pat Arcare is going to join them. How, how do you surmise it? What, what's been the big shocks for you? What have been the... Well, oh, Cypress. I mean, they're seeded one in the final. If we get a torrential downpour, they're through. You know, <laughs> so I care. They'll be really hoping the rain stays away. Uh, but that's, that's been the, the real big surprise. Well, reverse is on, and he gets four. Well, not a bad shot at all. Little highlight for Will Pershad. Well, now's the time to try the party tricks. And they can muster a smile over there as Will gets four. Yeah, nice shot. Uh, inventive, trying something, and gets four for his troubles. Good batting. Yeah, that's big surprises for me. Uh, yeah, maybe RB, RBS not making the final. Okay. I, mean, I think that uh, Fisay obviously he'd be really disappointed that he couldn't kind of make make scores at the back end of the week. I think yeah. they rely on him heavily. I know that uh, he'll be quite reflective about that. Such a talented player though. What about Farmers? Yeah, Farmers. Uh, well, let's let's be honest. Uh, we I think we didn't know how they would they would adapt to the format and the conditions. I know they played some T10 cricket, uh, and I think they've just found themselves. Slightly, slightly wanting on the approach sometimes. I think when they've lost a couple of wickets. I think if you said that they'd go four and five for the week, though, that's a big underachievement for them. Oh, they would, they would agree with that, I'm sure. Well, this time it's not a wide as he reversed his hands. But yeah, because I think they came in thinking they'd make that final, and I mean Cyprus have stolen a spot. But yeah, it's just you wouldn't expect a team of that level to be well four wins and five losses. It's a lot. Anything can happen though, and anything will happen. I don't think you really know where you sit until you come into the bull ring and dance at the ECL. And Farmers going to fall quite short in this chase. Sums a slower ball from Shiraz Ahmed. And how do you sum up Pakai Care after being put right on the ropes, basically, and again coming back yeah. this strong? I mean, look, when it comes down to it, they're going to find themselves in the final, which is where they would have planned to end up anyway. <laughs> so... Uh, it wasn't the route that they, they would have chosen, but still they are there in the big dance this afternoon. Nice shot. Nice shot. But uh, 
think it'll be four in the end because one bounce and uh well well, I think they'll double check this because yeah. it looked like four for me. It's been signaled the six. The fielder signaled four as well. I mean, it was actually a bit of a laser. We'll slow it down as much as we can for you. Good shot. We'll see it bouncing around about six. You reckon? I reckon it's four still. Oh, it's four. There you go. Yep, definitely will. Good thought. camera work. Very good camera work. Uh, look, yeah, Pack I care. I think they'll be most no nervous about the weather, not the rain. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, not the actual match. <laughs> Last ball of the over coming up. Nope. Oh, not, gives us time for another question from Lemmy. Well, it's directed to me, but I might handball it to you. And do you think that the Dutch teams will be disappointed with their performances in the tournament? Well, tell us uh, what you think, Corey. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, VOC brought a very young side and Harvey Lesser very young as well. Um, I think they probably would have liked maybe one of those teams to get to the final. But, you know, T10's a funny game and yeah. in the end didn't make it. Last ball of the over coming up. Now this is Miles in the air, and well, Eastun's going to swallow this, and he does. So, it's the end of Smith for a dozen. He tried his hardest. Uh, unfortunately for him, he does hit a boundary, goes to the very next ball. And leaves Farmers after nine overs at 67 for seven. Yeah, good catch from Eshan again, because he had to contend with the stumps. And this is a remarkable comeback from Pakai Care. If they were get, thought we were going to run away with 40-run victors in this match, or around that re region after yeah. being... Four for 28 after five. They've won basically every over since then. And another wicket falls and, uh, well, Farmers Tournament coming to a pretty sad end. Yeah, well, it is. Still, their supporters giving Smith a warm round of applause. I'm sure they'll be so disappointed that they are going to bow out of the group in third place. Just one over to go then. I just want to give one final thank you to you, Corey Rutgers, Thanks, for your company in the commentary box. Uh, I know that you'll be back with me in Portugal. That's where we'll be united. Three weeks' again. time. I think, yeah, three weeks' time. Maybe two weeks' time. Yeah, I'll just say thank you to all the viewers that have tuned in. It's been really special to be here for, for the Champions League. Again, like first time was as a player, this time as a commentator. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think uh, we all agreed. Even if your peacocking wasn't quite up to standard, uh, we've enjoyed the commentary and insight that you've provided, particularly tactically as a high-level coach. I think that's been a really you know, useful addition to the broadcast. And Tief Muhammad's going to close things out. And he almost misses the final <laughs> as, he's, as he's knocked into the next life. If he didn't get a finger on that, that would have been trouble. Thankfully, he did. And look, now there's a bit of spice out of this game. You can sense a nice moment there as Will Pershaw just checks if, if Atif Muhammad's all right. And I think when, it, when it's all said and done, we had two teams out there. And look, Pack I care. They can get fired up too. You know, I don't think they're completely blameless. I think their composure's pretty good usually. Well, until you poke the bear. Five to come. I think it's good hard cricket in the end. I mean, I know people don't necessarily like the verbals and stuff. <laughs> I suppose we've been brought up on that culture, so I'm a bit less sensitive to it than most. Yeah. I always um, find it funny when people give verbals and they're going at 15 and over, though. That's yeah, yeah. Oh, no, of course. You've got to choose funny. your moments. But also, I think that sometimes people watching from the outside, they, they don't understand as much as the people out there in the middle who uh, give it. Uh, but then, the end of the game, you know, hang up the boots. And, and as we see another... Reverse, they put the fielder back now. Who are you calling for the final then, Vinny? Cool. Let's say let's say it's not rain affected at all. Who are you calling? It's hard to go past Pack I care. They've been the form team all week. Do you think the Cypress team will be disappointed you're saying that? I mean Oh yeah, there. I'm sure they will be. But I, I don't think they deserve to be favourites on the back of one performance. Well it's not one performance, they've won a lot this week to Against be there. Pack I care. Okay. Oh, bowl. Yeah, I'm not saying they deserve to be there. If your question is uh, do I think either team can win? The answer is yes. If you ask me who is the favourite, I still think Pack I Care have to be favourites based on what we've seen this week. Disagree with me? Uh, how many games did Nicosia lose? Maybe two? Not many. Well, Pack I Care's lost. They, they were three and two. I think that they've lost, lost. They've lost three matches. I think that loss today was what Pack I Care sort of needed. I, I think a team can't go through undefeated in T10. Uh, It'll be one out to deep square. I think one ball left. They're going to win this game by 40 runs, which is a big, big margin in T10 cricket. Can you believe they did that after the first five overs? I mean, they've, th oh, yeah. they've thumped them here. I mean, after five overs, you know what they were? They were they were 28 for four after five overs. And you're right, they're going to win by 40 runs. So It's an absolute thumping, a drumming. Take nothing away from their performance at all. Last one. Could be another wicket to finish, or it could be six in the end.
It's going to be out. And so Will Pershard, he does hold out after an entertaining 10. And yeah, Charles Armand. Yeah, get a look at this one. Yeah, it's a nice safe catch by the captain there. Very calm, very controlled, and he's just inside the rope. Good, good catch, and another wicket falls, and well, Pakai Care, they were tested in this one early. They come out the better of the two sides, and they deservedly get to the final. Yeah, so the host nation is still in the tournament. Yeah, a lot of handshakes now. I know an hour ago or so, some, some tempers were fraying out there, but I think it's just a sign of, of how much these teams wanted to stick around. Unfortunately for Farmers of Jersey, is the end of their ACL 22 experience. But I'm sure it'll just spur them on to win the domestic championship this year in Jersey. And of course, that farmer's field is available to, to touring squads. If you'd like to have a tour there, you can just look them up, Farmers CC Jersey. And uh, I have enjoyed all of their supporters. Just wanted to say a quick shout out to all of the, the Jersey supporters. Thank you so much. We have really loved having you as our guests here at Kartama. But right now, We'll see them applauding off Will Pershard, good young player. And uh, well, see Rico there, he's going to be gearing up for the final. And if I could sum this one up, I could say that it was camera o'clock, set your watches, pack I care, they had the runs on the board. Yeah, well, butter wouldn't melt in his mouth, the big man. And they did play it pretty well though. In the first over, they got that one away to the boundary, Baba. Well, he also got a little bit of treatment in the second. But what he did do is come up with early wicket of Sumeran. He just flicks this one away. It was a good catch taken by Sikander Ali. And that was just the start of this really annoying period for them, uh, which included a maiden in the third. And that really put the brakes on and put Jersey on the back foot. Yeah, they never came back from this maiden. I mean, bowling a maiden in the power play, Hitman either takes wickets or he's less overly effective. He never goes for too many, and it was great bowling. Outside the power play, Sikander Ali came on bowling his little off-spin darts and took a couple of wickets, and, well, Mohamed Cameron can't keep him out the game at deep mid-off, and they just kept picking up wickets at the right time, and the, the Jersey team just couldn't get themselves in this chase. Yeah, no, they couldn't. This one was skewed up in the air. Yeah, it's a really good catch by Isan, who has a bit of a rough landing. Didn't get the landing wheels down, but still did complete the catch. How about that one from Cameron? What a stutter that was as he took that one diving to his left. That was the end of Kinman first ball. And from there, that rate was climbing and climbing. Firth went trying to chase the impossible rate. And just kind of knew at this stage, the sting was out of the game. Jersey knew that their ECL dream was over. Yeah, and it was over. The dream had to end eventually. And uh, well, there was a couple more highlights right at the back end. A couple diving despairs from Paco Karen. They really threw their body around. And well, glad he didn't get that one in the face. And, Overall, the spirit started to lift a little bit. It's a, a lot easier. There was a few reverse malachis, but oh, reverses. Yeah, but the game it came to a close in this last ball with the wicket to the captain. A nice catch, and uh, it was game over. All she wrote, and uh, Pack I care deservedly into the final. Yeah, so I mean they've been the form team all week. It would have been highly surprising to, to, to miss the final. Um, they didn't get there the way they would have planned because they did go down to the Lions this morning of Cyprus. Um, that is the final matchup now, and it will start in about an hour and ten minutes' time. We'll start with National Anthem, so make sure that you join us for that one. Of course, the winner of the final this afternoon will join the four other clubs that have already qualified for Championship Week. And a nice aerial view there of the Kartama Oval, including the fan zone. Where I'll be hanging out over the next hour or so. But uh, ultimately, you can see here that no one ever really got going. 12 from Smith was the best contribution as they fell off the pace. 10 wide, so that's a bit of a concern, probably for Pack I Care, but ultimately, I think five of those came in one ball. So, look okay, how they just couldn't get going, especially that maiden in the third. If he's not taking wickets, you're right, Corey. He stops stops runs and, yeah, oh, that yeah, rate climbed and, and that was it. Ace to try 11 off 17, kind of sums up the first half of this attempted chase. Yeah, that's what a maiden does. It just puts pressure on everybody. No one actually scored above 12. Yeah. So the highest score of 12. I mean, the extras were the second highest scorer. Yeah, five players in double figures, but no one passing 12. And with the bowling figures, plenty of good performance. But just look at the top. No wickets, but nine runs, including a maiden. 
Very good, T Ted. And you say that's what some of his worst figures as well. So uh, the wickets went to Sheryl Ahmed, three for 15. Two for Atif Muhammad, who bowled a good couple of overs there at the end. Skander Ali with a couple, the spitter. Muhammad Baba, oh, he never bowls too badly, does he? One for 19. In fact, all five bowlers used were in single digit economy. So it was. It was always going to be falling short if that was the case. Well, once again, for the last time, I want to say thank you to you, Corey Rutgers. Uh, good luck with everything you're doing, obviously, with the Spanish national team. I know you've got some big tournaments coming up. I know that we'll see you in a couple of weeks as well for the Portugal ECS, and we'll be reunited for that. But uh, hopefully you enjoy the final from the fans' home. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, thank you to all the viewers and uh, everyone at the ECN crew and Dan Weston and James Cantor for getting me in again, surprisingly. But no, it's been special. I'm looking forward to the final and I'll see you in Portugal. Yeah, and I would just like to also just reiterate to you that I want my jacket back. Because coming up in an hour and 15 minutes, we'll be back with more cricket. I <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed us that. The toss is happening shortly. Check out the live chat and also our website, europeancricket.com, if you want to know how what happens at the giant coin toss. But for now, Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo, alongside Corey Ruckers Rico. He'll be back for the final. When we come back in about an hour and 10 minutes for more ECL action, who will be the final qualifier? We're about to find out. This is ECN, and you're watching the Bet to Ball European Cricket League. See you soon.
block. Now please remain standing. Now it's nice to see the host, club the host country represented by uh, team in the Group E final. So now we would like to play the national anthem of the club from Spain. Takake Badalona, please stand for the national anthem of Spain. that time let's get ready for the battle of bat versus ball and just to remind you that uh, it is the Spanish champions like here from Madalona that won the Grande Cointos and they decided that they are going to have a bat as we have a look at the two teams and of course all eyes will be on the two openers Mohamed Baba and Ishan Mohamed Cameron, no doubt he'll play a part in this match. And I think this time for the captain as well. Well, that is what the bat versus ball wall is telling us. That it is going to be the champions from Spain, Pacaque, Barcelona, playing on home soil that will go through and win this one. And, uh, well, I think a lot of people are mixed in their opinions. Because don't forget, in the earlier match between these two, which was almost like the dress rehearsal, the Punjabi Lions and Nicosia, the champions from Cyprus, won that one. They did manage to dig deep and get to a score of 94 for 9 and uh, kept Pekakea Battle under the Spanish champions to 88. Will it be a repeat of that earlier match or will this one, the one that counts, go the way of the Spanish champions? A big warm welcome to, well, so many people around the world that are tuning in for this one. And a lot of talk in the chat as well, and uh, people wishing both teams the best of luck. It's quite an overcast day it has been, but fortunately the rain has stayed away. There was always a chance of it, there was always a forecast, still is. But at the moment, the Sierra de Katama are keeping it away as we get ready to start. Mohamed Babar is opening the batting with Mohamed Ishan, no change there. And it's going to be to Jinder Singh to bowl the first. Mohamed Baba after that magnificent knock. The, was that the innings of not just this week, but of this Petter Ball European Cricket League? 75 he scored. That took him to 250 runs in this European League so far. Here we go. First ball to Jinder. Oh, this is a nasty one. Oh my word, what has happened here? He holds his head, he can't believe it. That'll be a no ball to start. This has come out completely wrong. But well, not only was that in danger of taking out the batter, but probably in danger of taking out his own wicketkeeper as well, Roman Mazumda. Well, this is what pressure can do. This was a terrible delivery. Completely goes wrong. And uh, yeah, he's saying, Yara, ki karita man. Ki ho gaya, ki ho gaya. Don't worry about it, they're saying to him. Takla hoke, takla hoke. Come back strong. So, well, how about that? No ball, free hit. And it still will be a no ball. And it's funny what nerves can do, especially when it's a big moment like this. And that one goes a long way wide as well. So, free hit stays in place. Well, what a fabulous start this is for Bagai Kia. Runs on the board without having to hit the ball so far. And uh, well, he gets the dot in eventually. So, 
That's almost like hitting six on the first ball, maybe. Because that is the first legitimate ball, and this six on the board. Without the ball touching or making contact with the bat. And, uh, well, hopefully that will help settle his nerves. And Baba. this one and uh, that's a good line actually to bow to Baba because I think anywhere in his swing zone we know he's so strong especially on the leg side what's the field like I'll quickly tell you extra cover that's uh, Scott Austin out there and then we've got mid wicket Tanjit Singh and uh, well Tanjit's got work to do here does very well gets down gets dirty Keeps it to one. A lot of noise around the ground. Nice to see a rammed packed fan zone. Everybody glued to the action. The noise also coming from the Pekar Care Battle Honor bench. And the players, Cyprus champions on the field. And this time it's just in the And the, the other batter. And uh, I thought it was going to be Mohammed Ishan. That was the info I was given. But as you see out there, it is actually Sekunda Ali. So they've made a little change. Now go for a single. Single taken. Sort of understand that I suppose Sikanda he's uh, shown that he can go big, and that's why he's in there for so just making some tactical changes there. The Spanish champions goes so through again. Well, I have to say, I mean, if he finished this, this over, well, he has that was the last ball, he's done marvelously well. But uh, the thing is, though, is the leader, this is something I know that drives Mr. Maximo mad. We shall hear from him in a moment. But it's four for the bowler. Only four because with that horrible, horrible, horrible delivery start off with, that going to be ball, the no ball, goes down as one no ball and four buys. Well, nearly uh, took out the wicketkeeper, Mazumda, and then he gets four buys for it as well. Anyway, it's eight without loss to Dwinder. You have to say, he does recover well. Good Patap Singh, the captain. Ball the second. Played out to the man inside the circle. But, uh, it off. Single. Who's going to strike first? Will it be the Maximo? Will it be the wicket bat? Versus ball. The Champions League of cricket. And that's a soft dismiss if you can get it. Oh, no, 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 no. It goes over the fielder. And uh, Vikram Verma, all he had to do here for me, just take a couple of steps back. I think he thinks it's coming to him. It isn't. It goes over his head. And, uh, well, if there's one man you don't want to give a chance to, is Babar. He showed that in the last match when he was dropped before he got the double figures. And you know what he did? He went and punished the farmers and now well that one I think you've got to take that and this one's going to be a wide yeah, he just misjudges it the field I think if he just takes a couple of steps backwards it would have made that because it was dipping down it wasn't on the up nice shot there of second alley and what uh, what a few months he's had it wasn't that long ago that he was in hospital with all sorts of issues He's actually in a coma as well. And now here he is, fulfilling his dreams. Magical moments for some of these players. Hit hard in the air is a chance. Can Austin get there? He doesn't need to because it's the safe hands of Tadwinda Singh. What a good catch this is. And Tadwinda continues to do what he's done all the way through this week. What a catch that is. That was pressure, a pressured moment, and they've got the big wicket. Well, Baba, he does get lucky earlier on, but he's not able to make the most of it. It's the wicket. It's Guru, the captain. 
That's the bowling, and well, is a man that, uh, well, almost is his double in looks and in performances as well. It is Tajinda that takes the catch. First wicket down, and what a big one it is. Here's the wicket of the man who showed sensational form. They were talking about that innings. Was it the best innings that we've seen in this championship? It may have been, but uh, what happens in the past is the past. It's what happens here and now. Uh, Mohammed Baba departs, and now it will be Ishan that comes in at number three. What a good catch that was. That went a long way up in the air. Sensational. So, Ishan. There we go. It goes a long way up. Has a lot of work to do. And look at that. He takes that by the heart, doesn't he? That's what it means to him. And uh, doing the job for his team. Guri. A confident man. A confident team. He believes, they believe, that they can win this and be back here again next week. In he comes. Oh, oh no. This is going to be five. And uh, looks like uh, Mazunda, I thought he had this, but it goes through him. I mean, I don't know. Let's see this again. Does it just dip under his gloves? He's still going to try and stop him. It wasn't a good delivery, but he's still going to stop this. Let's have a look at this. Oh, look. That just keeps on going, doesn't it? And uh, valuable runs. Really valuable runs. Don't forget, we've had the extra so far is quite easily the highest scorer. But that one at least will go down to five wide, so there's nothing that Mzumda can do about this. Guri needs to get one in the slot. The Ishan. Ishan plays this one out. Takes the single, so he gets himself off the mark. The noise levels around the ground for this group final are sensational. Ooh, can the captain deliver? Can he deliver again? Shaba Shaba. And it goes right across. We've seen it. Oh, it has been given a wide. He's had to think about this. bit of time to give this one I think the question of he's got to decide here whether it does go over the stumps or not and in the end after some deliberation he decides that it probably is going just wide of that leg stick very close call but once again I think for me only the umpire standing up in the right position can give those the camera can lie it was called a wide extras goes up even more Nice shot, four runs. This is really well played. And well, when you can play those sort of shots, Sikanda Ali, I don't know why sometimes he tries to go funky too early. Lovely shot, nicely played. And Guri, does he, does get the big wicket. And after that, he's let himself down a little bit. Just, uh, well, that ball's being fetched on the fence. That's 13 extras, buys four, wides eight, no ball one. There, they've got that wicket. Score is good. Slower delivery. This time, no run. And uh, thinks about letting this go. End of the second, and the score 25 for one. And it's a good time to welcome back into the commentator's box, Mr. Maximo. Thanks, Rico. Yeah, proud moment, of course, these two nations as they were able to stand for their national anthems. But yeah, my nerves are jangling. I think a few nerves jangling out there as well. I mean, it was a proper Steve Harmison special first ball, wasn't it? And Tejvinda, you're right, the extras shot themselves in the foot so far. Put up lines, Nicosia of Cyprus, but look, big wicket of Baba. I'd say you'd take this at this stage, considering how well he batted in that previous match. So now, go to the third over. And Sushil Kumar is going to bowl at last over the power play. Short, it's well played. So it will be fielded by Austin. It's funny, there's a, a poll in the chat. There's over 800 votes now. Who's going to win? And it slightly favours Punjab Lions' Nicosia. Well, is, uh, I suppose that's based on the, the last uh, meeting between the two, perhaps. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Good ball. 
That's well bowled, yeah, keeps his tidy. Kumar, I mean, has Kumar been the, the one that's been overshadowed good balls, perhaps good balls, by the likes of Tajwinder, Chawanjit and Guri? Could he be the one that everybody's talking about after today? He's sort of been the, the silent partner in that lineup of the bowlers. That's up in the air a long way. And is it going to go to the boundary field? He's going to be careful. Oh, no. Has he taken that catch? Oh, I can't believe this. I cannot believe this is unbelievable. Oh, how about that? How does he catch this? Look, they're both okay. Did they catch it together? Wow, that is sensational. That is out of this world. That is Sir Sudan. Chamal has taken. Well, the most bizarre, the most unbelievable cat you'll ever see. But well, this is all about love. Stronger together. How about this? That is stronger oh. together. Brace for impact. And look at this. And they're holding each other. And it's Jamal that never lets go of the ball. Oh, and I love it. I had, love it. We had Valentine's Day last month. But well, let's just say I've never seen a catch quite like that. I mean, to catch it in the beginning, he was running back a long way with the flight of the ball. Again, not easy conditions for catching, but that has to be one of the best catches we've ever seen on the European Cricket Network. Friday finals, bringing it, and it's going time for Scudder Ali, who has to depart for six. It's 26 for two. Well, there may not be any sun here today, but this is sexy cricket. Look at this. And uh, that is amazing. You will never see. And this moment here, wait for it. Ah, oh, that tells you a story. That for me, that clip there, that for me is what all this is about. European cricket. That's what it's about. And uh, well, this is the bet to ball European Cricket League, the Champions League of cricket. You will not see anything like that anywhere. I've never seen anything like that. And that is in well almost 40 years in the game that is sensational what a catch well, you only see it here on ECN Kumar with the wicket and continues now this is Abid Maboud that comes to the crease still some danger in there though I mean keep an eye on that current run rate it's still above 10 but uh, I mean what can you say about that I mean that was just out of this world I was just worried for the welfare of Sadhu Jamal he was basically going the wrong way down a one way street and there was a truck coming he didn't, he didn't bother him at all. I'm amazed. Just so focused on the ball. I cannot believe what I've seen. And well, this is kind of going to do it again. It could be a replay. Oh! oh. Wow. <laughs> Almost <laughs> spills off you, another amazing catch. Do you think now he's worried because he knows that he might, he might get cleaned up? Whereas the first time, he, didn't, he wasn't worried at all. He was just focused on the ball. A bit of a top edge. I mean, this was a chance to get Isan. He's missing his partner. He's saying, where were you this time? I need you there, he says. I need you there. Pound for pound, you will never see more entertaining cricket than you'll see on the European Cricket Network. Oh, my boob's turn. That's, that's, the off. that's the end of the over. It is 28 for two. And earlier, Rico, I know that you had a word with Pakai Care skipper, Shiraz Ahmed. We'll come back to that in a second while we queue that up, but let's go back to that over. I mean, how about that catch? That was just unbelievable. I have not seen anything like that, as, I, as you heard me say, in all the years that I've been watching and following cricket. That was unbelievable. It really was. That is something that will stay with me, and I think with everybody that's watching around the world, millions of you, come and admit it, that will stay with you forever. That was something amazing. And uh, I said that, Kumar, could he be the one? That does something sensational. Well, it was off his over, I suppose. And uh, this man here looked Tiwari. What if I told you that Tiwari at the moment in uh, this Betterball European Cricket League is right up there joint as a top wicket taker? He has taken 15 wickets. Yeah, he mentioned he's had a really good week. Rhino was a big fan of his. This one just swings away a little bit. Will be a wide. So, yeah, his, his extras have been the issue. That's. Uh, <laughs> Trying to catch your breath. Exactly. Uh, to get two of those <laughs> in an over. Square leg. Oh, this one almost yeah. spooned back to the bowler. Tiwari putting the brakes on. Still quite 
can't quite believe that catch. Well, that'll turn up in the highlights. Chappelle's caught well. Goes for it, sort of slices this and puts a bounce on it. Does very well. And then comes the throw. They've got good fielders to have in there. That's one thing that we've seen. And that's one thing that's really amazed me. After coming from Cyprus and uh, seeing the teams play there, the way they perform here at the moment yeah. in the field has just been absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's been very, very impressive. Change of pace is so important, isn't it? And Tuari comes in, slows things down. He slowed the run rate. I just feel that Eastern hasn't quite got going yet. He can be really destructive. He's in that ECS level, and we saw glimpses of it this week. This is a great opportunity for him to kind of engineer him out of a jam. Taking him on, Ishan misses out on it. Are you surprised that uh, we didn't see Cameron coming before Mabu? Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, short answer, yes. <laughs> and that's, I mean, maybe it's the confidence thing. He did get a duck, of course. True, but then you want to get out there and, and prove yourself. Last ball of the over. There he goes for this, and it could be a chance. The field is coming around. He holds on to a sensational catch. What unbelievable work. Cyprus has pulled in two hangers now. This time it's Vikram Verma who takes the catch to remove Mohamed Isan, who never got going in the final. He goes for four, and it's 31 for three. I can't believe it. Here's another great catch, and this time it's from Verma. And one of the things I was talking about is I cannot believe the improvement or just how good that that team there, the, the champions of Cyprus, the Punjab Lions of uh, Nicosia have been in the field. And this demonstrates it again. This is not an easy cat. He's got to be worried about the rope. He's got to be worried about his footing. And he's got to wor worry about his landing. Well, the landing, well, it may not have been so uh, so delicious, but the catch certainly was. They are up and about. So that's four overs down. It's 31 for three. Disappointment for Isad. He has to depart. And both open is back in the shed. And well, I think now we have the footage, Rico. And then as Cameron comes to the crease, I'll let you stay tuned and we'll show you that interview. Rico Full with Paco Kaya skipper Shiraz Ahmed. Thanks, Vinny. And I've got Shiraz here with me. Shiraz, first of all, I'm going to ask you a question about the match. And I'm going to ask you a question about the match. And I'm going to ask you a question about the match. And I'm going to ask you a question about the match. You've played this once before. You lost that match. How does it feel when you lost that only match in the group? जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम सब तो पहले तो मैं सब देखता हूं सब जुड़े भाई मैं भी फैन स्पोर्ट कर रहा हूं मैं शुक्रिया अदा करा दा दूसरी गलती है साडे वास्ते एक एक्सपीरियंस ही फाइनल तो पहले साडा एक फाइनल होया हार तो सबक सीखया वे ते असा अच्छा कमबैक कीता वे ते इंशाल्लाह असी कोशिश करा दे ऐसे ही कमबैक ने कैरी ऑन करके असी फाइनल भी विन करिए Want to thank everybody for their support and say, yeah, okay, we lost that one. It was an important game. It felt like a final, but it wasn't the final. We did lose, but we have come back strong, and we're hoping to go all the way this time. A final the bit on the twenty performance team performance the achieve. Babar the batting both achieve. Cameron the bowling achieve. Kathi Sikinder we made a call for one division area. But key player corner. Just asking who would be the key players that would have to perform in this final for them. Key player Hassan Babar, Abi Sikinder. कामरान तो उधर बाद वो बाकी सारे आने बाकी सारे की प्लेयर आ अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह बहुत अच्छी टीम है सब द कंबिनेशन बहुत अच्छा हुआ तो सारी अपना 100 परसेंट दे रहे हैं सब तो अच्छी गाने हैं तो सारी टीम फील्डिंग बहुत अच्छी हो गई है सारे बैक कर रहे हैं एक विजन कर रहे हैं तो एक हमारा बस by saying that really if you look at the, the team they're all big players key players every one of them can play a big part and one thing he mentioned there which i think i'm very uh, pleased he's mentioned he said that our fielding has got better if we field well and then we're doing well in all of the key elements of this match um खेल भी स्पेन दे बीच वास फॉलोइंग बोथ है गेस स्पेन दे बीच एक इन आर कोई प्रेशर पा रहे हैं तो उन्हें परफॉर्म करने उच्च सास्किंग दैट ऑब्वियसली दे आर प्लाइंग हेयर इन स्पेन दे डी हाउस क्लब आर दे गेटिंग एनी एक्स्ट्रा प्रेशर टू परफॉर्म वेल इन दिस वन जी बिल्कुल प्रेशर है आवे बड़ा बड़ा इवेंट है तो प्रेशर तो बिल्कुल होना मैं इसी आज खेल लिया है लेकिन इसी आज और इसी आज बहुत डिफरेंट गेम में तो लड़के बहुत सारे लड़के टीम जा सकें जिधर फर्स्ट टाइम बार्स लोने तो बाहर आएं खेले उन्हें तो प्रेशर भी सी लेकिन जिधर सीनियर प्लेयर ने उन्हें हौसला दिया कि उन्हें क्या तुष्य अपना जेड़ा जो तुष्य कर सकते हो तुष्य करो अपना 100 परसेंट दियो तो इंशाल्लाह टूर्नामेंट विन कराएं। Just saying yes, there is pressure. There is pressure when they play the ECC here as well. ECL is a different kind of pressure, but it's all about look, give you 100 percent and you will be able to get that result. Well, look, it's great talking to you, and I'm sure to our DB performance both the Krihoni A final a bit. मेरे क्या तो आदि best हाले आज से देखें नहीं शायद final बीच देखूंगे। I'm just saying, I'm sure the captain's performance is going to be good as well. I haven't seen the best of it. Maybe it's going to be in the final. Back to you, Vinny. 
Well, exciting times. And Shraz Ahmed, he's throwing with Rico. He's also out there in the middle now. He's come around facing up. Just pushes away. And this time will just be one. Yeah, so you heard what he was saying there. The captain saying it's a slightly different type of pressure. Well, maybe so. It's the same kind of a situation as the last game. This pack I care had a horrendous start last time. They were 28 for four after five overs. They're in almost the same position this time. And last ball of the over. So it's driven away. Well, this should just be one. Well, stone cold. Little fumble. Allows a second. That'll annoy him, but still he took a very good catch that over, didn't he? To get rid of Abid Mabu. So that's the halfway point. And the score now. 34 for four is welcome. Rico back into the commentary position and well what can you say about this start i mean actually you think if you take the extras out of this out of this total i mean it's looking pretty dire but what we would say what we would say is that we uh, saw we saw pack i get out of a jam a similar kind of a jam in the last game against yeah. farmers of jersey uh, can they do it and you think someone has to go large well maybe it's mohammed cameron who's out there yeah mohammed cameron or as, as you heard in the interview i was saying well maybe this is going to be the one for the captain shows ahmed well one yeah. of those two has to they were a bit of a pickle while we were chatting you saw that mabu also was out to a good catch from from austin so uh, they need something to happen here and uh, the thing is though i mean they have got strength and depth in their lineup Paco care about a lot of the Spanish champions, but one of these two you feel has to go and go big. And that's a nice looking shot, but again, the fielding has been really good, it's been yeah. sensational. Defensive pressure, isn't it? I mean, you get a catch like that from Southern Jamal earlier on, just sparks everyone. He always pulled off a second one. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, I mean, Southern, uh, he is absolutely fired up. He just run all the way over to back that up. And that's the sort of yeah. energy that you need to see. That's the sort of dynamics that they need to provide in the field. This is going to be really close. And uh, the game for the review. It's, it's a close. Good clean pick up, good throw. I've got a feeling about this live. It doesn't seem close, but I actually think it is. Really? And I actually think it could be in a bit of trouble here. Okay. But I mean, I'm a long way away. He does get the bails off pretty quickly. Look, look, it's close. Oh, does he get that bat down? Oh. I think, oh. I now, don't think he does. I think that could be just out because it's a plonk. I think that bat's in the air. And we freeze it, that frame stop. I don't think that bat's landed yet. The bales are off. Oh, I think he be could out. be gone here. Honestly. And he's gone. He's been given. The show is Ahmed. He runs himself out. He can't quite slide. It was millimetres in it. But I think you can see the frame there. Excellent work by our team at Spring Productions. But, well, it's the worst possible result for Shiraz Ahmed. It just goes factually. Yeah, live. I just thought, yeah, that bat's come down late. And the bales were already off. I thought it was really quick work by the bowler to whip him off. And so now, Paco can't lose a fifth. They lose their captain, 36 for five. I've got to give it to you. you got a good eye on those ones. I heard you call one in the match before, and he was spot on. And this one as well. On that occasion, you said he's in. This time, you said he's out. And you're right. I mean, it doesn't get any closer than that. So more pressure. So it's not going to be Phil's army. That's going to provide the vital innings that is required here for Paco Kier, Badalona. Who is going to do it? Well, Cameron is running out of partners. You just get the feeling here that he's actually going to have to start going big. Well, what about this man? Mohamed Yassin. Well, we've, he hasn't really had... Let's see this to the refers. Well, this is absolutely being blasted. And that does go all the way. Bole, bole, bole. Kidna, sora. Kidna, bada, shaka. And that is a big hit for Mohamed Cameron. He's absolutely smashed this. Yeah, Yassin, look, we know all about him. We know he's a class act. He's coming in here. This might suit him. Yeah, I mean, you still got to attack. And that's what we've learned this morning when teams have been in trouble. Oh, takes a bit of a risk, but he gets it pretty good. He gets it real good. Four runs to Cameron, who is on the charge. And then he takes a risky stroke. This basically a horizontal bat stroke. The cuts, chuck shot. If he misses it, he's gone. But he doesn't miss it. He gets four. Beautiful shot uses his feet well but he keeps his shape doesn't he doesn't let his head go up in the air he knows that uh, this is now turning out to be a vital vital knot for him he's got to perform here last ball the over what's Cameron want to do we don't see a wide you're seeing yeah, he's missed a bit of cricket yeah he hasn't been too well he's been cleared and he's in the team 
Well, the final. He's at North Strikers at the moment. He's playing with 40 first class match experience. It's, uh, well, a lot of pressure out there. This is muscled and it's going to be into the gap. It's going to be four. What well, perfectly picks the gap between deep mid wicket and deep long on. It's four to finish the over. It brings up the 50 for Pakai Camp. Well, it's a pretty ugly 50, but still they've got there with six overs to go. Two of all still get, gets them to 99. So, very, very interesting point in this match. Six overs down. It's 51 for five. Yeah, I mean, uh, a couple of boundaries there for Mohamed Cameron. Takes him to 16. I think he feels that uh, there's no point hanging around. There's no point being too defensive and worrying about what's happened. He's just going to be positive and playing the positive mindset. I saw 66 almost defended last week in the Group D final. It's a good time to tell you that I used to make a handy second income when I was playing, uh, <laughs> betting with my teammates on third umpire dismissals. Because sometimes they'd all say, there's no way that's how that's it. Cheeky tenor. <laughs> it's great work by the officials. In that one spot on. Here's Guri. That's a good pick up from the man there. At third, gets the edge, but doesn't let it go past him. It's little things like this that can make a difference. I mean, that could go anywhere. Could go either side. And it ends up being the boundary. Yes, in. Gets off the mark. With his first delivery. But now, all eyes on Cameron but not with the ball in hand with bat in hand Cameron's changing this little by little 16 off 6 faces Guru Singh oh that's a delightful shot it's a clever cricket he knows that man is inside the circle hitting it over the top and uh, well they were very nervous but now they're starting to see a bit of light as uh, Mohamed Cameron Gets himself into the 20s. Well, come around the hitman. He was player of the series in the Spanish Championship weekend back in the 30th and 31st of October. He is a big game player. Pressure just seems to bring out the best in him. You can't get much more pressure than out there in the middle right now. He's on 20. Yeah, delivery from Guri. And uh, they'll get the single. So he won't be too worried about who's at the strikers. And he, he has to have faith in... In Yassin. Yeah, I mean, Yassin's played 40 first-class matches in Pakistan. And Yassin is a class batter. You'll often see him opening the batting. Uh, he's a real wild card in this batting lineup because we haven't really seen too much from this week, but I know how good he is. Left-hander on strike now. Well, that was a wild hoik. That wasn't uh, the best side of him. And, uh, and you can see Mohamed Cameron just having a chat with saying to him, look, play each ball on merit. That needs to be playing on that side of the field. Guri just taking time to compose himself. He gets a dot ball in there. Dot balls at the moment are so important. Six and seventh overs have actually been the highest scoring overs for Pakai Kerr during this tournament. Funnily enough, this hasn't been the first couple or the last couple. This is when they do their work. That's gone high up in the air. Is it going to be taken? It is indeed. And another one goes. And it's a swinging wild was Yassin. And uh, he didn't take the advice of Mohamed Cameron. Cameron stands at that end for a minute, but he can admire the view because he's, well, unless it's the over, which I don't think it is, he's going to have to walk back because he can't be on strike. And uh, not sure what's going on here. They're just waiting on something here for a moment. And, not quite uh, sure. Well, it's, uh, are they checking perhaps no ball or something? I mean, catch has been taken. I think he's got that under control. Oh, it's a no oh, ball. No ball given. It must be for outside the circle. Oh, Timmy Field is outside word. the circle. This oh, is unbelievable drama. A turning point. Well, you know, they've got a left hand, right hand combination out there, right? So, what often means is there's field changes in between balls. And what well, must have been that there were six outfielders. So now it'll be basically no ball plus one, and Cameron's going to be on strike. And I don't know if that is that field at, down at five leg. I mean, there, the foot's. Yeah. Obviously called fine on the field, but it, that must have been what it was for. All right, here we go. Free hit. And he's nails this. It's big. Well, that's going to hurt you. What they thought was a wicket. They thought it was delight. It ends up being a nightmare because no ball was called and the free hit has been dispatched for six. And uh, what a turning point this could be. All right, talk about a swing of momentum. Doesn't get much more than that. Over the giant ice cube. They ran off it as well. So Cameron's 27 off 9 going at 300 strike rate. 
And uh, last ball of the seventh over coming up. And you've seen, well, he gets a reprieve. But it will be Cameron to face the last ball of the seventh. No doubt, towards mid wicket. He'd be quite happy just to take the single because it means that he'll go back on strike. Yeah, I mean, that's a massive moment in the match. And uh, Noble was called. It wasn't called straight away, though. That was the thing that got me. The catch was taken, and then it looked like the third umpire came yeah. into play. Because they're watching the field at all times, right? So they could say, yeah. look, I need you to call that. This is what's coming up, and how exciting is it? We're only well, two and a half days away from Championship Week, and look at these teams coming back. We've got Tunbridge Wells from England against Brigade of Ireland. We've got Precious EC of Italy against Abhi's Army of Sweden. And you see the fifth team. We don't know yet. It'll be either Punjab Lions or it'll be Pakai Care. They'll be playing third and fifth. So they don't get too much time to rest, but they will get a couple of days. And they'll get the, the Monday morning off at least, so a bit of extra rest. But join us on Monday. You don't want to miss it. Championship week. Five champion teams will return at AM GMT, which is 9 o'clock in Central Europe. 1.30 p.m. in India. 66 off seven then. And this looks like Taranjit Singh who's going to come back. Yeah, they've got to put that behind them and then get back up here. Oh, well, talking about getting up. This has gone up. It's gone up a long way. Gea, 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 Shaka, Lagia. Now he has risen from the ashes of a disastrous start. And it's almost the same start that they had in the previous match. They were four down and way behind the eight ball after the halfway mark. And now Cameron. He gets one that really was just too short. But it was all about the footwork there. Gets yeah. inside it and makes that shot a lot easier. A bit of light rain. Looks like it's falling out there in the middle. It's not good news for the Pakai Care players. It's not good news. I mean, the thing is, really, I mean, you can talk about good players. You can talk about... You've got to watch this guy. But it's all about what they do with their performances. Mohamed Cameron is showing just why he's a good player. Misses out on this one. Yeah, Turnjit gets that one through. Do you think that maybe if there's a little bit of rain around, obviously it might be a bit slippery, does that neutralise his bowling to some degree? The fact that he might not have full confidence landing? Yeah, for sure. And uh, certainly will be the same for some of the bowlers of uh, the Punjabi Lions. You can see that we're looking to come back into the attack as well. Thumped. And Fielder needs to get to... Oh, well, he does get a hand on to it. Will they think about the second? Uh, Tajwinda's done well. I mean, maybe they should have taken two there. Mohamed Cameron is a little disappointed that Yassin didn't uh, react earlier to his call. And he's saying, look, come on, you've got to take two there. And I yeah. think he's absolutely right. I'm not so sure. I mean, hindsight's 2020. You don't want to wicket at this stage because you've lost five already. I think it's, it's easy once he sees the throw coming into the middle of the pitch. Uh, I think he, pi he picked it from the way he knew to Jin uh, that Tajinda had a lot to do to try and get that and get the yeah. throw in. I'm not saying he wasn't there. I just think you're saying he wasn't certain. If he's hesitated, then you've got to kind of just take your medicine and, and settle for one. Just very light rain falling at the moment. I'd hate for that to be a factor. That's well hit, but the fielder is there. Oh! Puts the catch down. Oh. And could he be run out? He's out, I reckon. I think he may be out here again upstairs. Well, it's uh, to Jin that, that uh, puts the catch down, who's normally so safe. We saw him needing... The second helping in the last match to take his crucial catch on the boundary. He drops the catch, but he does get the throw in quickly. <sighs> Have bad, a look. Bad cricket. He ball watches for way too long. And by the time he gets going, he's run out here. He's out. Or oh, is he? Yeah, I think that, yeah. We'll probably get a better look. I think he may look be here. just We'll play this gone. down. I think that he's gone. Yeah, he's gone the, yeah. here. Really great camera work there. I'm getting the second angle, which confirms to me that he's gone. And so you've seen, he knows he's already walking off. And so, yeah, seen almost a blocking the camera angle, but I think he has been given. And so, yeah, it's just basics. I mean, I, th I think he was expecting that's either court or it's going to be six. But as it was, it actually doesn't cost him anything at all, except it does change the strike. As you've seen, has run out for two. The score now is 73 for six. Yeah, I think that's, that's all about... Uh Mohamed Cameron giving him the message and saying, look, you got to run. If it means I'm getting to this end, well, look, maybe it's going to be close. Maybe what's happened there may happen. You get run out, but I've got to stay in strike. Yeah, no, but the thing is, it's a run, you know? It's, it's a run. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't yeah. run straight away. It wasn't away. like it was a, a dodgy run. He just never took off. Well, bold. I'll sneak in. But, uh, yeah, it's basic, especially this, this stage. And you've seen already had a life. You're putting a lot of pressure on the bottom order now. I say bottom order, but Budget Hanif handles about really well. Uh, but it's just more that now wickets 
uh, starting to panic you a little bit. Quarter wide, gets a bit too much of the line. There's a 50-50 call, so Foster says. That's uh, it is a wide. Yeah, he goes for it. I mean, here, I mean, do you gamble saying to the keeper to come up? I mean, knowing what Mohammed, Mohammed Cameron is doing, he's charging down the wicket, he's coming out of his crease. Does uh, Mazumda try and come up? Well, oh. as we talk about it, yeah. maybe he's going to. It also becomes risky because with that slippery ball, if one gets away, maybe slips down the leg side a bit wide, then you could give away a boundary behind the wicket. So, a high drama, expect nothing less. Here's the last ball of the eighth. Yeah, he doesn't time this well. Opportunity taken. And uh, Mohammed Cameron does depart. And the keeper standing up. Does that do the job? Does it mean he just stays inside his crease? Has to play a different shot? Maybe. But the key thing here is, is that it's another catch taken. Another good one from Verma. And that's an important wicket. Challenge it seeing strikes. It really is. It's only a slight miss hit from Cameron. And it probably is going for six except the fielder. Now he is dancing his way to another wicket. And so Majid Hanif says, oh, that was pretty good. I might take that bat off you, but he will continue without camera. As he's dismissed off the last ball, the eighth over. But still, what a contribution from him. 35 or 15, well, he turned things around. In fact, still, not, none of his teammates have hit double figures. But he departs with 12 balls remaining at 74 for seven. Yeah, look, that was a... They needed that over, didn't they? I mean, when you think the last over, the last two overs, if you think, the last one from Tawari went for 16, and Gui's over went for 15. He was unlucky, of course, with that no-ball incident happening there. But Tomaji gets a good one in, only eight off it, and two wickets as well, the run-out, and that cat taken by Verma. So, but, I mean, do you think, I mean, look, all right, we've got 12 balls to go. I think Pakai Kia Batalana, they'll be thinking, look, maybe if we get another 15 to 20 runs here, that's enough. We've yeah, done, we've done it. We've done our bit. But if you go large, you can still sometimes <laughs> kind of fluke that many. That's Garamans. He's improvising an umbrella. Ninth overtime. It all happens in the ninth. Edge. And is it going to go four runs? And sometimes you don't always get the rub of the green. He swung, swung hard, gets the edge. And with the third man in the circle, that goes all the way in the region of the giant European cricket ball. Four runs. Yeah. Well, you need some luck. I think you're going to win this final. And Majid Hanif gets a fair slice of it straight off the bat, or straight off the edge of the bat. This is Taranjit Singh. So I've got a good bowler coming back here. Ted Spinder Singh, I should say. Taranjit finished with the wicket, but here we are now in the night. Still drizzling out there. It's not particularly heavy. Short and well, Tadrinda goes down. So it is starting to get slippery. And here comes a good throw and once again could be close. And bowls it in there. The Drinda goes down, he picks himself up now. And uh, well, let's hope he's not hurt himself too much. A bit of a hobble back, just watch this. It's, just, it's a step after he bowls and he just kind of slips and slides. It wasn't a very good throw, it was bowled in by Sushil Kumar. That allowed him to get back for two. Well, hopefully it hasn't hurt. Tez Vinder too much, because he's also a very key part of their batting makeup. Yeah, so 10 balls to go. I mean, what are we heading for? I mean, they bat well. Pack I care right now. If you offer them 95, they'd probably take it. Yeah, just, uh, well, just look at everybody in the fan zone there. They're all, they're all cramming in under, under, <laughs> under the, uh, the shelter. In the all sort of move from outside into the bar area, watching from wherever they can, all on their feet. Yeah, they'll be hoping that uh, this rain does not spoil what promises to be a fantastic final. This is well struck, but to the fielder. And uh, well, Guri thinks about this throw, decides against it. He knows that to Drinde's and back there. The two men on the boundary are pretty deep. If he throws and misses, it's yeah. going to be over throws. I'm probably throwing that. I think the value of a wicket here is, is pretty significant because, I mean, maybe he's 50-50 at best to hit, but still, if you can, yeah, get the new batters in. Just getting a bit concerned to get about getting bowled out. It's very similar, actually, to the first innings today when Cyprus were batting. Well, if he hits, he's out, and it bounces over the stumps. And that's going to be a bye. Good running from the uh, 
Spanish champions they need to get as many runs they can on the board. That gets the score on 22. Well bowled as well. Yeah. Tadwinda is disappointed, and that's just unfortunate, I think, from uh, Mazumda. I think the throw is in terms of the accuracy was right. <laughs> yeah. It was the bounce. Yeah, bounced it over. Hanif on strike. Yeah. Well yeah. But you know, it does remind me of that innings this morning. Do you remember that? Uh, Punjab Lions Nicosia in the first innings of the day they lost nine wickets on the way to 94 but yeah. it turned out to be enough mm. you know it, it's pretty similar I mean they were they were 75 for nine at the end of the night but then those three big sixes in the tenth over got them up to score yeah. in the 90s so maybe Pakai Care can kind of flip the script and uh, and do something similar themselves up in the air should be taken has been taken so it's another wicket and uh, also importantly is another dot and that means that and the other new batter is going to come in for the last over six balls to go and both batters will yet to have received a delivery yeah but there's silver lining to this one uh, because it was caught the batters go back to the original ends but in fact because it's over then the established batter will be on strike when you say established as i said yeah. i haven't faced the ball so <laughs> but he's faced one <laughs> so uh look you know, I think it's a good result. Atif Mohammed is yeah. probably the man you want on strike in this situation. He's been joined out there by Mohammed Mochim. Imagine Hanif. He goes for just seven. Sam Houghton in the chat. Hello to you. He's just saying, that's what we always taught to aim at the base of the stumps when you're trying to hit them. It avoids a situation where it bounces over the stumps. But, yeah, I think you have to be brave here. This is what I said this morning after nine overs. Do you remember? I said, you're still, I think, trying to get boundaries. Uh, pack I care. even what they've got on the board right now and fancy themselves to defend it 10th overtime he's hit his out in the direction of Verma they'll take one they're looking for oh two no. and well he's going to be out here by a long way well the two batters haven't communicated well here at all and that's losing the ninth wicket they're in danger of not batting the full quota of the innings here that's just needless that's needless okay this is why you need to chat about what's going on because it's one thing if you sacrifice a wicket to get Atif Muhammad back on strike and even then, I'd say it's probably not wise with eight out. But in this situation, you see Mochim's coming. Atif hadn't even finished the first run. And now you've sacrificed a wicket. And you've got the number 11 who's going to have to come out and face. Adil Shafka will be on strike. And wow, high drama. We've seen some wickets fall in the finals, haven't we, over the last couple of weeks. So Mochim goes without facing the ball. The score now is 83 for nine. 83 for nine, so... Yeah, so out without facing. It's a bad communication from both batters, really. You've got to be switched on. If I'm Atif Muhammad, I'm yelling out a big no and putting my hand up saying no and yelling. It's just something that I think uh, in some parts of the world, the running between the wickets is just an area that could be improved a lot. And, and Mochim, he, he turned and just went and didn't even realise. He would have realised if he had looked at his partner that his partner hadn't even finished the first run. <laughs> So you've got to use your eyes. Nine out now. They're in danger of being bowled out. Short. Sure. Clever. Now, they can't afford to make any mistakes with the running now. Because right. uh, it's the, the last peering in. 84 now. What's your strategy now, if you're Atif Muhammad? You've got four to, four to come. Yeah. You're on strike. Nine out. Hit big. Hit sixes. Think go for it. Yeah, he's going to go for it. He tries. And this one is going to go the journey. Enrico oh, said it. And Atif Muhammad does it. Maximo six takes them up to that 90. Yeah, look, that's key in the 90s. And I think uh, that would have been what they would be looking for, a score between 90 and 110. They've got the 90 up there. And uh, now they'll be thinking, yeah, OK, any runs here now are bonus runs. They'll want him to just do the same. Got a good bat on this as well. Can't run take two. one. You can't run two. Oh, um, a bit of a fumble, but not enough to allow the batters to take two. So, okay, what now this is the question. What do you do here? I think Shafka, do you take a single or do you go for it? Yeah, you sh I think you, you score. So I, I think you've got to get bat on ball. I'm probably just taking the one here and leaving it to a teeth. Yeah, that's way. the one. Yeah. It's an interesting one. And they have batted out the overs now. Jeez, this is so similar to this morning's game. I guess we'll just have to find out if Pagai Care can de defend as well as Punjab Lions Nicosia can. Well, so here we go. Last delivery. 92 on the board. It'll be wanting to go big here. 
And into the pads. They'll keep running for sure, will they? I don't think they'll bother. Uh, there was only going to be one there. So, 93 for 9. That's what we finish on here. And uh, just once again, have a look at the halfway score. Well, they were in all sorts of trouble, weren't they, once more? 35 was on the board, four wickets down. And then Mohamed Cameron, I think he played a superb cameo knock, hitting the ball to all parts of the ground. And uh, then he fell, and somebody else had to take over. Well, there was a little bit of uh, bad communication. And uh, somebody had to get them into the 90s, and it was... Adib Mohammed, he played the big shot, he played his role, I mean, though he was involved in that crazy run out, the key thing was for me, he stayed on strike. Yeah, look, they still squeezed 19 out of the last two overs, but before the match, proud moment for both these two teams. There was a fair few cries of Viva España around the ground, as you can imagine. The Spanish representative on, on the home turf, and that was their old throwback, Steve Harbison special, and I don't think Ted Winner could believe what he'd done. That cost them five, but then it was all about holding their catches, and they did. That was a key one, wasn't it? Tejvinder himself yeah. holds on to Mohamed Baba, who's been batting really well today. And then this one, well, what can you say about it, Rico? Oh, I, was, I just couldn't believe it. I was worried about the collision, and next thing I know is a hand pops up in the air from nowhere with the ball in it, and I thought, there's no way he's caught it, but he did catch it. Well, that's showing that social distancing was a thing of the past, and we almost had a second. He almost palmed it back, and uh, Taranjit and Sadat Shamal uh, getting in a tangle there on the leg side boundary. And yeah, this one, this was a good one, wasn't it? Verma, well he gets that one, and the dub lines, they can see up. They said it all week, that we believe, we believe we can do that. And they're 10 overs away, and of yeah, course at the other end, there was this wicket. And uh, <laughs> I know that Stone Cold Scott Austin, well he was so happy to hold that one, get rid of my boob, and then and a couple of close calls, that's Shiraz Ahmed getting run out, again, not running on the pitch, not really able to slide his bat. There was Cameron really that held it together. Yeah. Without him, this innings was in dire straight. Yeah, I mean, that was a start. Dances down, first cuts one, then comes and hits one big. And all of a sudden, a uh, team that was pretty quiet found their voice again. This drop, well, there was a drop, but then the throw results in the run out. It wasn't the best of running, you have to say. So that wasn't too expensive, I suppose. Cameron was still going strong, but then it was Verma who takes another catch, and then he does a little dance as well. And, but, I mean, those are important runs from Cameron. But certainly, one thing is for sure, he is going to be fired up when he comes steaming in. Let's just hope that uh, this rain doesn't get any heavier. Just looking at it from uh, from our little cubby hole here. It seems to be okay. Well, that was a, yeah, it's a bit crucial... Of crucial bit of well miscommunication yeah I mean this was important this they get away this at least gets them up in the 90s Atif Muhammad trying his best and again it's so similar to this morning uh, that the teams have flipped okay this morning it was Punjab Lions Nicosia that got 94 for 9 this time it's 93 for 9 and it was a pretty scrappy innings is the way I'd call it and just have a look at this I mean, nobody reaches double figures with the exception of 35 from Cameron. But the 19 extras, uh, look, 18 of them avoidables as well. And just thinking that if it wasn't for those, they'd probably be chasing something around the 80 mark or maybe yeah. even the higher 70s uh, as the light rain falls. And we're very, very hopeful we'll get back on in about 10 minutes. But that's another factor because remember, if Pakai can't, can't get out and bowl three overs, Punjab Lions, on account of winning this morning, they actually would qualify for Group E. Well, does that mean that the, the Punjabis of the Lions are doing a little bit of a rain dance? Well, I don't know, but you know what? I'm going to say no, because yeah. I think if they if, I think they want to earn being here next week, if they can, and uh, they'll want to go out there and do it the way they want to do it, and that's in style. They want to go out there and knock these runs off they can. It won't be easy, of course. I think uh, it's going to be conditions that the both sets of teams will have to contend with. I mean, you said it. Would, uh, how would uh, Mohamed Cameron be running in here? You saw that to Jwinder Singh as so you look at the bowling figures. He slipped a couple of times, so, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy. It won't be easy for the batters as well, depending on the direction of the, of the rain. The fielding as well becomes an element. But look, all the bowlers did well. They yeah, all took wickets. Two for seven to Shul Kamar. He often said he goes under the radar, but he bowled really well in this one. Wickets to all the bowlers, actually. The rest picking up one. Well, pack I care. It could be... A hurricane out there. They'll be going out to bowl their three overs because if they don't get on, they're going to be going home. And so Pakai Care, Badalona, they will be defending when we return. And they'll be putting up lines. Nick up. They'll need 94 for a place in Championship Week starting on Monday. 
Incredible drama. You'll only see it here on ECN. Vish Andrew here, Mr. Maximo, alongside Rico Full. Don't go too far. Join us in just a few minutes. We'll be back, hopefully, with some more cricket. You're watching ECN Group E final action in the Betamore European Cricket League.
Hello and welcome back to the Carnival Oval on the Costa del Sol in Spain. Well, some nice pictures there from the air, but right now, slightly different story in the middle because we have had the rain pick up a little bit and during the innings break, we have seen the covers go on. So we're not going to start uh, as we were planning to in a couple of minutes. Uh, we do have a bit of a window, of course, to complete this game. If we cannot complete at least three overs for the Punjab Lions, Nicosia, then it will actually be the Cyprus team, Punjab Lions, that will go through after they won this morning. Uh, we do have a bit of time, though, before the cutoff, probably around about half an hour, just over, to at least be able to get in the three-over game. It's all dependent on whether this rain slows down. Well, it's probably a good time to... Uh, we're just waiting for a bit more of a decision to uh, throw it down to Rico because earlier on he had a word with Punjab Lions. Nicosia, the captain of their team from Cyprus, is Gupadap Singh, and he was speaking to Rico for... Thanks, Maxi. Guru, because he finally reached the final. I'm just asking Guru, he's reached the final. Did he ever think he would get to the final? ਹਾਂਜੀ ਭਾਜੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਾਈਪ੍ਰਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਸੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਆਉਣਾ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਤਿਆਰੀਆਂ ਉਦੋਂ ਦੇ ਚੱਲਦੀਆਂ ਸੀਗੀਆਂ ਕਿ ਫਾਈਨਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਜਿੱਤਣਾ ਆ ਤੇ ਆਪਣਾ ਜਿੱਤਣ ਟੂਰਨਾਮੈਂਟ ਵੀ ਜਿੱਤਣਾ ਆ ਹੋਪ ਹਾਰਡ ਵਰਕ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਤੇ ਵਧੀਆ ਖੇਡਾਂਗੇ ਖੇਡਿਆ ਵੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਵੀ ਖੇਡਾਂਗੇ ਜਿੱਤਾਂਗੇ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ Yeah, Guru, just saying when they became the champions of Cyprus, they did believe in themselves. They said if we can play the way that we did here, the way we became champions here in Cyprus, that there's no reason why we can't go to, to Spain and be champions there as well. Our match the best to the key player corner, general performance necessary. Just asking who would be the key players that would have to perform in this final. हां जी पहला ता जे बॉलिंग पहला साडी बॉलिंग आ असी यही करंगे कि ओपनिंग बॉल ओपनिंग पेयर मैं और तेजविंदर सिंह आ कि बढ़िया बढ़िया छेती छेती जो ओपनिंग इना दे विकेट जिन्ने जल्दी ले सकदे होए लवांगे ते प्रेशर विच पावांगे ते बैटिंग विच ओपनर ऑब्वियसली मैं रन नहीं आए थोड़े टाइम तो ते मैं रन करने दी कोशिश करूंगा रोमन आ स्कॉट आ तेजविंदर आ सेम हार्ड वर्क करंगे बाकी देखो भाई गुरु दी कृपा ना की हुंदा just uh, saying there that obviously with the bowling himself and Tajwinder Aki and with the batting got loads of options though he hasn't always performed he's hoping that he will be able to in this one jado pehla match ta hoya tujhe jit gaye si ta ore vich ta tusi bahut confidence apni layi hai dobara kar sakde saying you won once already can you do it again have you got the confidence to do it again हां जी पाजी पहला जिदा ग्रुप ग्रुप दे विच दो मैच होए सके इना नाल ते उदों भी थोड़ा जा बैटिंग दे विच कमी रह गई सी ते अतकी ओ बैटिंग दे विच हो गई सी 92 95 टारगेट मान के चले सी थोड़ी बॉलिंग ठीक आ ते सवेरे भी ये चीज बढ़िया हुई आ ते होप हुन भी ओही चीज करंगे घट तो घट स्कोर रोक के ते बढ़िया बैटिंग करके जितंगे जरूर Yeah just saying that they got the runs on the board first time if the bat well they can do it again they will win well with confidence from yourself good luck thank you back to you vinny yes well we are back and you can see yeah, just light rain but pretty persistent rain at the moment falling that yeah, has delayed the second half of this group e final crucial crucial clash now just been running a few numbers so don't quote me on these if we were to get a three over match for example i believe the target would be 32 or something like that maybe that's past score 32 or 33 uh, of course we'll give you the specific numbers when we know what's going on and that is the scene at the moment vinnie sandu here now rico joining me back in the box well rico certainly it's disappointing whenever rain intervenes but especially at this juncture with so much on the line i'm sure that everyone would be super disappointed at the moment that we're not out there playing some cricket Yeah, I mean absolutely it is disappointing and you know that both captains were up for it. I think uh, like you said, I think this match is evenly poised. I think uh, Pakar Kher and Lana will feel that even though it's uh, not a big score, it's one that they can defend and I think at the same time, I think the Punjabi Lions of Nicosia will believe that it's a score that they can chase. So it's uh, it's not like I don't think that this rain is favoring any team. I really don't. I think it's still it's in the balance and uh well it doesn't it's It's not heavy, is it? Not no, heavy rain. It's not it's heavy. It's not thunderous rain. It's just consistent. We it's just need yeah. it to just ease off. It's persistent. So really, yeah. this is where it's, it's down to the, particularly the the, the the opinion of the umpires and the officials about if it's safe to play, uh, and they'll have to just take out the fact that this is a final and, and the situational yeah. nature of it. I think they just need to to treat the situation on its merits. Oh look, uh, we're at the ECL right now. This is the Champions League of European cricket. Uh, but one thing that we uh, Uh, have coming up and we're looking forward to going back to is the European cricket series of course because yeah. 
at the end of next week. It's hard to believe, but in a week we'll know exactly who wins this ECL. But the schedule for the ECS has been released uh, for the first part of it anyway. And look, it does start with a week here in Cartama before we head to Catania in Portugal for a two-week series. That's going to be great to be back at that ground, which is in Paolo Bucimaza's back, back, back garden. And then Cabela in the Netherlands before we head to Bulgaria. It'd be great to be back there for a week as well. Prakash Mishra and Co. they'll yeah. be waiting for us. And then Romania, for a test seat, Pavel Florin back on the park in the ECS. Yeah, certainly would be. And uh, I think it's going to be another super sonic exciting year of European cricket. It's going to be great to go back to a lot of places we've been to already. It's going to be great. What is going to be good for me is also to see some players that we've seen playing in the European Cricket Championship. We maybe yeah. talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, no, we but can. Also the European Cricket League because yeah. those players have, have seen what it's all about. They've played there. They're going back and they're going back and they're I mean, educate maybe is not the right word, but yeah. they came back and they're coaching, educating the players to get better, to get stronger, because they know what it's all about now. There are there are things there now for these European cricketers to try and achieve, yeah. and coming out here is one of them. Oh, it's a massive carrot, isn't it? I mean, these marquee tournaments, the ECL, and you mentioned the ECC there. What do you mean massive well? carrot? Are you, getting, are you massive, taking it per massive carrot personally? <laughs> some subliminal there. <laughs> It's, uh, well, I'm having a great time here, and look, uh, we'll be so sad to say goodbye to Cartama in a couple of weeks, because yeah. we are here for the ECS first week mm -hmm. after ECL finishes. But later in the year, and this is breaking news today, we had the, the draws released for the European Cricket Championship. And we'll check these out. I haven't even had a chance to have a really good look at these yet, but we've got some new countries in that weren't represented last time. We've got Ireland in there, we've got Scotland in there, yep. we've got Switzerland in there as well. Uh, down in the bottom right hand corner and uh, and yeah we also got France in there so and and Malta I think Malta didn't have a team last time either Malta. so uh, I think they're the ones that I've picked out but yeah let's have a look at these some of these matchups group A uh, with España vamos España not going to be easy Ireland, once again Spain and Portugal drawn in the same group as yeah. well so we get to see that kind of a battle uh, we'll probably see the beast, won't we, from the Czech Republic, Sadesh Wikramasekera and Aaron Ashokan. Yep. So there's some of the players we'll get to see. And also Austria. I mean, Austria are pretty impressive in last year's tournament. They did get to the championship week, uh, but they just couldn't quite put it together towards the end. And look, Spain, don't forget, they made it all the way to finals day in the ECC last year. That's going to be interesting. And uh, I know that one man that's normally on the chat quite a lot, Aki Bikbal. What do you think of that? I mean, interesting. But yeah, that is quite a spicy, spicy group there. Look. Tell us, do we know about the form? Because one thing a lot of people yeah. will say, looking at that, say, where's England? Yeah. Where's England? Now well, tell them about England. They're there. See, England's down there, and how this will work is that each of the groups, will, a bit like this, they'll have one week uh, that they will play, but only the winner of each group is going to go through to the championship okay, week. So that's now, a change. England, as the reigning holders of the trophy, they automatically qualify for week five, and then... Uh, the winners of Group A, B, C, and D, they will join them. So it's kind of similar, but a little bit different. So 21 nations represented in the ECC in 2022. Well, moving to Group D, and that the Netherlands in there. Remember, they didn't quite make the final last time, but we know that they'll be they'll be really impressive. Uh, Denmark and Sweden and Finland. So it's a bit of a northern feel about it. And Hungary, well, the Royal Tigers, they impressed us, didn't they? They're in Group B this time in the ECL, Royal Tigers. And and that'll be in Group B in the ECC later in the year. Yeah, we'll see some players returning there, and some big names like Gatsapal, of course, who's been, uh, well, he was a sensational player when we saw him in the ECL. We saw him also play for Hungary in the their national team in the T10 competition here. Just all very exciting. And, uh, well, what's also exciting is Group C. Yeah. It's nice to see that. We have Scotland joining us as well. Yes. But what a, what a group that's going to be because, look, you've got Scotland, Belgium. Yeah. France is there as yeah. well. Malta, we know about Malta. And, of course, we welcome back Luxembourg. So, exactly. We've got, uh, three of those teams are new to the ECC. Scotland, France and Malta. Yeah. Okay. And, and Belgium, we know how good they were. I see what kind of team they big. And France, well, we know how they approach it at the club level. And we'll have to see uh, who's eligible to play for the national team. We know that they'll be explosive. And then yeah, Group D. Well, Italy and Germany, they seem to get drawn together as well. They'll be in Group D. Uh, and I think they'll they'll have Norway with them, which is, they're a pretty tough team as well. They had a bit of a slow start, uh, but they, they looked very dangerous at times. Romania, of course, they've got plenty of experience as well in their lineup. And Switzerland, it'll be great to welcome the Swiss. And I certainly think, remember Alton that we had playing for 
uh, representing Switzerland in this tournament. Yeah. You know, they, they certainly showed that they loved the challenge of T10 cricket here at Karatama. And, of course, only four of those countries above the line. They will join England in the Championship Week. Yeah, and, of course, the amazing news about this, of course, is, is like last time and like this tournament, it's sanctioned by the ICC as well. So that's a huge, huge plus. And that means that criteria you said about players that will be eligible to play, obviously we've got to then go by what the ICC criteria yeah. is. And uh, maybe we can just dwell on that a little bit. Yeah, it is an ICC sanctioned tournament. So uh, I don't pretend to be an expert with regards to uh, what you need, but it, there is a residency or, or a citizenship uh, requirement yeah. and, and normally the residency is about a certain period of time yeah, that's required. You, usually it's three years that you've been in the country and you've obviously uh, been resident in that country also you need to be playing cricket for a club and yeah, so you so it's one of those and, and I, you know I like that that ruling it, it just means that you eliminate countries and uh, all clubs as well yeah. if it's uh, an ICC tournament or just getting players in that really haven't they haven't uh, been in that country. They haven't supported that country. They haven't. When I say supported, they haven't helped develop cricket in that country. That's very yeah, important. And that's, that's what it's all about as well. Trying to improve. Obviously, at the ECL, we're dealing with a club, a club set up here. It's a, it's a bottom-up kind of approach. You know, it's, it's trying to give clubs something to play for the yeah. domestic championship and. and and putting an extra kind of layer to that, the fact they can play at the Champions League. But also the ECC, it's a top-down approach kind of. It's the elite level at, of, of cricket, international cricket. And so the fact we can play it in the T10 format, I think, is really special. So no good news out in the middle at the moment. The umpires are inspecting. But that rain, it's pretty much been persistent. It's not super heavy. So I think if it does stop or, or get a lot lighter, yeah, I think we will get a start. But, I mean, Pack I Care, they'll be out of their skins to get out there because... Well, now we've got around about 22 minutes, I think, until the cutoff time for three overs. We've already lost overs. Yep. And uh, I think there'd be a few nervous boys in the Pack Eye Care camp at the moment. It certainly is. And the question is, I mean, if we're not playing now, that basically means that unless the, the rain changes, we're not going to play later. So it's got to stop or it's got to get lighter. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise they'd be out there already. And I, I can... It's a... Putting an umpire's hat on at the moment and the tournament referee, Rob Cummings, it's a very, very difficult position that yeah. they're in because obviously they've got the captains in the air, uh, in their air. Their captains probably want to play out there, but they've got to look at the safety element of things. It's very important. Remember, the umpires are responsible for the welfare of all the players, and if they decide to play, if uh, anything nasty happens, they have to take responsibility yeah, for it. Of course, I and mean, what we do know is that is that uh, the players will be pretty proactive, especially the fielding team, which is normally the team which is uh, has issues if there's a bit of rain around. I think that they'll be saying, yeah, we're good to go, we're good to go, can we get on? But yeah, I was saying earlier, before you returned, that uh, the umpires have to take the kind of game situation and tournament situation out of it, and they just yeah. have to kind of judge the, the situation on their merits. Uh, but uh, while we see those pictures, which are a little bit depressing, I'm going to take a more positive beat and tell you about what's coming up on Monday. Yeah. We already had... A, uh, a glimpse at the fixtures. These are the teams that will be represented. Tunbridge Wells of England. And uh, this is how they'll actually fit in on day one. Tunbridge Wells versus Brigade. And then we've got Precious EC versus Alibi's Army. So that's England, Ireland, Italy and Sweden represented there. And they'll be joined by either Punjab Lions, Nicosia or Pack I Care. And uh, one of the little benefits, I suppose, whoever wins this group. Obviously, they've been working hard all week. They won't have to play until the third match of the day. So they get a little bit of a lion on Monday. But I certainly would say, I mean, this week we said there's no easy matches. There's really not going to be any easy matches on Championship Week. Five champion teams returning. Yeah, I mean, look, what's your view on the, the fact that whoever wins here today will have the weekend to sort of regroup and uh, maybe have a bit of physio and some, some aches and pains and be back again. Do you think it's a, do you think it's a plus to be to come straight back or do you think it's, uh, it's going to be a downer? Yeah, it's, it's so funny, isn't it? Because I think there's pros and cons. I think you're in the mode of it if, you, if you've already been playing. So the Week 5 team, they'll take some sort of momentum into finals week, whereas the other teams, although they would have been training pretty hard, I'm sure they'll be a little bit rustier. Uh, but uh, if you did play in the first week, you had all that time to sort those injuries out. So it yeah. depends on what your injury situation is. I mean, I remember Belgium in the ECC. They were really banged up. They were in Group A. Yeah. Uh, they had a couple of weeks off. 
uh, to try and get those things right. Players like Aziz Muhammad and he returned and performed well for them in the finals week. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a bit, a bit of bit of both. I think it depends on how good you're feeling. Uh, I think maybe the best situation is maybe to be second last week or something. So uh, something like Sweden, who they've been playing, they've been able to gather themselves uh, for a whole week and they will travel back. But there's that double travel element as well. Yes, I mean, Alba's army, we know that quite one or two of their players, it seemed like they were being held together by duct tape by the end of that week, and certainly by that final, they had all sorts of trouble, didn't they? At one point, we had, uh, you know, busted fingers and yeah. cuts and bruises, etc. But yeah, but one thing I do now, I can tell you this, I can share this with you now. Farmers, if farmers were to have won this week, they would have had big pro problems because a lot of their players, as we know, under 19s, they're either at university or school, yeah. they would have, they were having to go back. And uh, I know speaking to one or two of some of the uh, the senior players there, they said, yeah, it would have been interesting to see who we got, would have got in. And they doubt that their team would have been any stronger or any better than what they've got here today. So, yeah. really, um, it just goes to show that sometimes it uh, can also have a, a negative uh, a neg negative effect as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, this is just really sad scene at the moment. And just give you an update, still... Persistent rain. I wouldn't say it's heavy rain, but it's persistent. And uh, it there's about 17 minutes to go before the cutoff. Pakar Care will be desperate to get back on. Been a great day with the fan zone as well. And uh, I know that that's, uh, a lot of you out there are uh, being very patient. We appreciate that. Obviously, it's frustrating for us. Just going to do a couple of questions in the chat but most of the questions are about what's happening out in the middle I can tell you we don't have any play at the moment the Cubs are on and uh, let us see what do you think what uh, about the ECC as well Steve mentioning a team that's not there I'm sure I'd love to see them represented at some point again you know, it's growing piece by piece come from 16 clubs 16 countries last year to 21 sure we'd like to eventually get even more to that but uh, it's it's a very interesting concept. The European Cricket League, of course, first. We had a tournament in 2019. And sometimes, you know, I actually was at Molly Malone's last night. And you know what they had on? Yeah, I was having my Maximo burger. I don't know what you had there. Yeah, oh, go yeah, on. Was, what did, they, go on, what did they have on? Well, they had, well, they were showing the, the last innings of the day. So I popped over there for last innings of the day. And then uh, we had a look at the final from last week. Oh, the, wow, yeah. The Albi Zalmi versus MSC Frankfurt final. And then we popped on the ECL 2019 final. The game where VSC Rotterdam scored 222. What a, game. what a game that was, yeah. And, of course, that was held at uh, La Manga. Also in Spain, of course. The first one. But, look, I mean, you're talking about that 2019 final. But I know that uh, there's been some unfortunate things in the last couple of years. Let's just say that. Which has meant uh, that a lot of sport, including cricket and including the uh, European Cricket League hasn't happened, but the growth from 2019 to now, yeah. that, isn't that incredible? Oh, it's, inc it's amazing. I mean, when I think that was the first kind of uh, serious cricket that we showed on the European Cricket Network back then, it's just 17 matches. The fact that between then and now, we've done over 2,000 matches. So it's the start of something very, very special. And we certainly appreciate all our viewers for your involvement and your support of what we're doing. It's... Uh, and right now, no good news to to report from the ground. We uh, we will keep you up to date with what's going on. But uh, you know, Rico, a few people asking, like, would we have a reserve date? I believe for the final, we do have a reserve date next week. But the, the reason we don't really can't have reserve days for the groups is because logistically teams come in and out they have to be moved Correct, in they have yeah. to be moved out on Saturdays and Sundays and there's a very short window to do that so it's just not easy to organise that kind of travel especially with the world like it is at the moment so that's why you know that's why we actually said this morning's game was a very very important game and it was pretty up lines Nick that, that snuck over the line by five runs yeah I mean it's just uh, sometimes the way, the way it goes one of the things maybe the teams from Cyprus Maybe they have a way to have the the weather or the luck of the weather to be on their side. I remember when we were in Cyprus, it was again the, the rain that came in time for the final. 
And on that occasion, at the European Cricket Series, there was the Black Caps that ended up winning because of the, the final. And uh, still remember that day. I mean, everything was a washout. And then about an hour later, the sun came out. We had the, the most impressive rainbow that you've ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, the world's a funny place. I mean, I don't think Pagai Care will be laughing if this gets washed out. But I think of some of those guys uh, in Cyprus that rain cost them a final in that series we were there late last year but then it could actually benefit Cyprus here if if they can't get the three overs in now I'm told there'll be a ground inspection in about one minute in fact I see the umpires they're heading out there right now but I think yeah, the issue is it, there's been no real change in conditions and so yeah, that is that is the problem at the moment so I can see the umpires and the tournament referee so Rob Kemming there left to your screen see them sneaking in to have a look I think maybe it might have eased up slightly but it is still raining and that's what you would say at the moment yeah it's still raining i mean if it's has eased slightly they may consider perhaps thinking about uh, moving the covers be interesting to see what uh, what their observations are and of course one of the things they will also do when they're out there is uh, one of the umpires will probably have a little what we call like a boundary inspection go along the boundary and just check that all parts of the ground are, are okay. One thing I will say about this ground, and we, we've we've seen that um, during well, this is coming up to the end of, end of the fifth week. We've seen that it does uh, absorb the water really well. So I don't think there's going to be any real issues with uh, with any part, and with this rain as well, there's going to be no issues with any sort of surface water out there. That is for sure. It's just all about whether it's going to be safe enough for the likes of not just the bowlers running into bowl but batters running in between the wickets as well well if you're not a cricketer this is probably a, a good sign with this part of spain because we keep uh, being told that there, there is a severe drought here but uh, well why couldn't it uh, wait until later tonight that's what i say in the ideal world it will rain in the evenings yeah and be lovely and sunny during the day yeah that's true well ask us anything you like in the live chat at the moment as you can see that's uh a couple of the boys going out and let's just see because look, it has eased up slightly i would say it still is sprinkling but i'm seeing a bit of movement so this this could be this could be a good sign now yeah so it has, there has been a slight change it, it has there's still rain floating around but i can see people going out there right now and i think the eye well, all I can guess is from that inspection is that they have they are planning to get the ground ready for play and we've got about another 10 minutes where they could do that but I can tell by the fact that you know, everyone's running around like crazy to get the covers off yeah this is a very good sign Rico it's a very good positive sign so and uh, once again it's nice to see the farmers out there and of course the farmers will know all about how to uh, work on the field will you say that as one of them almost slips over as they start to undress the pitch so like a like a, a grand revelation isn't it when you're revealing something you pull the covers off okay and, -da! and uh, well there is a little bit of dinner or certainly will be if we're able to get this match on see even Corey Corey Ruckers is out there helping out as well and, uh, yeah these are good positive signs there is I mean the rain has I mean it has eased off that is why the umpires have taken this decision uh, though there's still a little drizzle there but uh, they probably would have spoken I'm guessing Vinny to to both the captains as well and uh, receive information from them as well so good signs positive signs covers are coming off and uh, we'll update you on what uh, as soon as we know yeah, so I mean if we were to start uh, in 10 minutes that's pretty much the cutoff time and it would be a yeah, three over match what I would say there's a kind of rain now it's similar to what they played in at the end of the first innings okay there was just a little bit of rain around remember the eighth night tenth over yeah. so yeah I think in the break it did get a bit heavier but it's really hard because uh, you have to make a judgment call but I would say these are the kind of condition typically we, we would play in and people say things like you can't start in rain but I don't know if that's ever actually written anywhere or just one of those things that people say <laughs> like, what well, do you think I mean yeah I mean again just looking at it from an umpire's point of view I think 
as long as, and it comes back to that same thing again, is the player safety, as long as you think that the ground is not unsafe and that the conditions are not unsafe and uh, obviously you would have had a little bit of input from both the captains as well, you would have spoken to the captains, the pitch inspection would have been done, so if you believe that the conditions are okay and safe to play in, then yeah, you go. Ahead, you do go and play. I mean, again, you're looking at this, the rain. I mean, there's a bit of drizzle. It's not lashing down. So I think that's what the decision is. And, of course, there will be updates coming your way. And we'll bring them your way, of course, on what the situation is and how many overs there will be bowled and what the target is, etc., etc. Et cetera. You see there the umpires are out. They're just checking that there's no issues. And uh, there seems to be a little bit of a nod of a approval there from... Joe Foster yeah. and look let's mention the umpires because I think they've been absolutely brilliant this week I mean got Joe Foster out there with Stefan Gooch and the tournament referee Sir Rob Kemin but all the umpires have been brilliant and uh, we've also got on head this week um, Asad Ali who's done a fantastic job and some of the other umpires that we've had um, in the week as well Nilkush Patel from Barcelona Charles Croucher who we will see again Tyrone Peters who's out here this week as well and Anshub and uh, of course Harrison Ward as well yeah all done uh, a fantastic job it's not an easy job and we've seen that already it's not just about uh, giving the decisions at the bowlers end or at the square leg it's about seeing things like the no ball picking up on the no ball and how critical yeah. those little things can be you know it's uh, you've got to be on alert all the time and then on situations like this you've got to be able to deal with uh, a lot of difficult situations when the rain comes you could make in um, you have to make decisions and have to make calls. You have to try and keep everybody happy and more importantly, you have to try and make sure we can get the, the game that we love in. And uh, well, this is even a even better side. The stumps are coming out. So the stumps will be going back in. And it does also, you probably see you're just looking at your own screens, it does look like it's getting brighter out there as well. Well, look, it's, it's subtle, but I still think this is about the conditions towards the end of the first inning. So if it's good enough for one team, good enough for the other and so yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a, about as high stakes as it gets because winner and loser of this game will have very different experiences next week one will be involved one will be watching so yeah, I think the umpires just having one last look but I do think we're likely to see some play here I haven't heard anything official so it looks like we, uh, we still don't have an official word, but it certainly looks to me like we could have a game and it could it might just be coming through now. Yeah, I think it's a case of right, get everything ready, and then when a decision is made, it's like go. There's nothing worse than yeah. making a decision and then starting to get things ready, i.e. the covers off the stumps and then say, right, oh no, we're gonna change that. I think they just want to get get everything ready and say, right, right, okay, that's what we're doing. Here we go. I've got I've got the official word now that it will be a three over chase starting in about six minutes so we'll stay with you and cyprus put your lines you can see they'll need 32 of three overs if they're gonna go through one over per bowler and one over power play so look to me i mean obviously the duck with lewis stern system it's it's meant to keep the the scales pretty much the same um, i think yeah they're gonna need what what's that 10.67 and over yeah, as opposed to the the 9.4 they would have needed if it was a 10 over game uh, one big thing though is now because of a 3 over game Muhammad Cameron he's going to get to bowl a third of the innings right instead of the 20% that he would have bowled yeah. uh, so that's pretty significant but really uh, it's a toss up and really you wouldn't expect anything less look you might say that it's a bit unlucky for the, the Lions if they were to go out this way but you'd also you could flip it and say it's unlucky for the Pack Eye Care team because they all week have dominated and they just lose one game by five runs they find themselves in a real precarious position here in the final it could go, look, it's one of those, isn't it? It's, uh, I'm not going to say it's almost a lottery, but it can go either way because you know the big hitters that uh, Punjab Lions and Nicosia have. I mean, the likes of Guri, the likes of uh, uh, Chajwinda, Taranjit, they can hit the ball very big. So if one of them get going, yeah. anything can happen. But also, I mean, they're probably thinking, look, how many um, expensive overs has uh, Mohammed Cameron bowled yeah, so true. that's going to be really key he's been so tight he's going so to land. he's going to have to land he's going to get accurate slight correction 32 was the pass score so 33 will be the target it'll be 33 so 32 for a golden ball can you imagine a golden ball oh please uh, so yeah it'll be 33 
uh, to win uh, in a three over game now here's the thing you've got an over from Cameron probably an over from Baba an over from someone else who would you someone else be for Paco yeah. Care and do you bowl them last I suppose you, you probably do yeah, spinners a bit risky wrist spinners depends what I mean the, the luxury of that decision is is they can make that decision after two overs yeah you know but uh, yeah it's going to be but you, the other thing is you've got to keep your nerve and is it easier to keep your nerve if you're a batter or uh, if you're a bowler and it comes down to experience as well yeah so we're not too far away from the start just updating you that uh, you do have confirmation now it'll be a three over chase it'll be 33 for Cyprus to get through to championship week well, that's good news that we are going to get a conclusion and of course it'll be heartbreaking one of these te these two teams that will have to bow out of the tournament in well, just about 15 minutes time well we had uh, should we just have a look at the screen here that's Corey Rutgers there again and, and uh, he's probably explaining to one or two people what's happening and the teams the good news is are starting to make their way out so once again just to recap from the information that uh, Billy Sandy was sharing with you 33 required from three overs and uh, well look back like here they're charging out there I can understand why they're charging out there because they are the team that need to play this they're the team that want to be out there and they're the team that know that uh, by being out there and having this reduced match or this reduced innings where 33 is the target they have a chance because if they weren't going out there then they were going out so they've got a chance and they've got to bowl well and uh, the Punjab Lions of Nicosia they've got a bat well bat strong and I'm pretty sure that the, they're gonna have to go with maybe Guri and uh, Tejwinda that's what I would be thinking but I'm wrong I'm absolutely wrong they've actually for the first time well in the in the short version of the match they're going with uh, Scotty Scott Austin wow. and I'd like to see him open but and the reason I was saying I'd like to see him open because I said he's one man that I think can bat all the way through the 10 overs and give you a good score I didn't think uh, it was because he could score big hits in the power play but they reckon he can this is a big surprise for me yeah well it is and you think he's wanted to open but now well, he does get his moment in the hot seat and now look can I tell you about yeah, DLS the question in there about you know, how come it's more than 10 over required whereas it was less than 10 over 10 over it was uh, to do with uh, if it was a whole 10 over. The whole reason is uh, you can be more aggressive. Right? I know you're probably going to be aggressive anyway, but now essentially you can see the last three overs first. So that's why typically uh, when a team has 10 wickets in hand, if the game gets shorter, the kind of runs per over will go up slightly. So it's gone from 9.4 to 11. But again, they only need to do it for three overs. So 33 is the target. And we're going to get Cameron in, but how confident will he be in these conditions? Well, he has to pull it out. Here we go, three over smash, 33 to win. He's, I can't believe he's left this. He thinks it might be a wide, he thinks it might be going over his head. Now you've got to swing at this, you've got to swing at it. Benny, you've got to swing at it. What if you get out? I mean, it don't matter. Yeah, I mean, you can't afford a dot ball. He thinks it's a wide over his head, and so if he hits it, then it can't be a wide. Oh, that's, well, yeah. that's your answer. Well, here we go. <laughs> well, attention, a dot. Yeah. Can you believe a dot? Another week, another bit of tension. Guri going out helmetless again to Cameron. This is almost like a repeat of the, the first ball that he that he faced with Cameron several days ago. Hits him on the shoulder. One over power play, don't forget. Stone But it's all on the line. Oh, drama here yeah. but I would, I would say these are the, the conditions final. that we finished the first innings in this is the same sort of conditions here's Austin yeah. what's right. what's being called here it's going to be a no ball it's a second one over the shoulder and I think the first one was he didn't offer and now Austin gets one I think this is a good call oh now I looked at it uh, maybe it wasn't but he gambles thinking he might get the call it's a tough one and uh, Cameron doesn't like it. He's going to have a free hit to deal with. He needs to keep his cool as well. So it's a run on the board as well now as a free hit. Yeah, yeah. 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 
gets away with it. It's another dot. It's, this is the thing. This is what I was saying. No team up until now has managed to take too many runs off Mohamed Khan. I think the only one probably was Harvey S. Pine out when uh, I think it was Tobias probably got 16 but then did lose his wicket to him. Got a run. I mean, if they can, if they can keep no boundaries here, to, the game just moves so quick in these three over matches, if they can keep no boundaries, then suddenly you need, what's that, like 27? You need like 14 and over. You've got Babar coming up, oh, looking very healthy there in the fan zone. We've got Julian Demay rocking the Cluj outfit from Romania. He's having a good laugh with Chuggy. Back to the action. And Mohamed uh, Cameron doing what he does best. I uh, still, I mean, look quickly. What are your thoughts, Austin? Up there, I think you would, you would surely have to go with one of your big hitters. Yeah, because you might as well swing away to Cameron, and just if you lose wickets, who cares? You know. But I mean, we're a long way from the finish of this. But still, it's been very good from Cameron. It's only conceded three so far. Last ball, the over. And this has been hit hard. He's going to go all the way. Zona Shaka Lagia, and uh, I can see Guru there. He's having a look at the umpire saying, "Come on, was that not a bit too high?" Well, nah. well that's poor the, only, the only thing I would say is, if you're bowling at that pace, nah, you shouldn't be bowling those. But it does go yeah. the distance, six runs. In my opinion, it was just okay. It's uh, hard to judge at that pace. That's the end of the power play. Now, yep, Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo, alongside Rico, full high drama. Another week in the ECL, another thriller we've got in our hands. But by definition now, this is a close game. That six just getting the Lions back in it. Desperate, needed a boundary, and they got one here. It's going to be Mohamed Baba. He's been very good as well. Yeah, There's has. tension around this ground. In comes Baba to Austin. Austin, he slices this. He's racing away. He's going to get four runs on it. He is, and there's a massive roar coming from the camp of the Punjab. Nicholas T. Lyons and well Rhino and Andrew there as well oh, everybody huddling together how the game can change in two balls there were three of five balls and now they're, they're 13 of seven. Oh my word this is tense tense stuff 13 remember 33 the target 20 required composes himself when he comes big swing and it's a dot a bit of pressure here on Austin and uh, well Guri he's just walking and saying I know what he's thinking to himself have I made the right decision have I made the right decision now the thing is if it happened to rain again now it's pretty much it right yeah. if it gets any heavier you I mean yeah yeah, you're right. get, yeah. If this well will be a single. So takes the captain Guri back on strike. He'll give his bat a little kiss. That's been his trademark. I saw that from him when we were in Cyprus. Gives it a little kiss and says, Come on, my baby, perform for me. Give me a shaka. That's my last over. Happy Shroz Ahmed. Uh, I'm nervous. I was nervous last week. I'm nervous this week. 19 off 9 required. Bowled him, good delivery, pitched up and knocks the stump back and the Spanish champions get Guri and uh, he goes after hitting one big six with the ball before. That means that uh, Tedrinda will come out. Yeah, it's a fair swap but it's it, they're running out of balls. It's, it's more to do with the fact it's a dot ball. I think he gets a little inside edge on this. Have a look. See, if that gets past the leg stump and it's a bit thicker edge, it's probably four but Instead, Babar gets the wicket. But yeah, the most important thing, that is a ball that they don't score off. Yep. And they lose their captain at 14 for one. Still 19 required off the last eight. Okay, just need a boundary straight off the bat here to get that down to 15 or less in the last over. There it is, Tijinda that comes out now. I mean, this man, if he, gets, if he gets a sniff of it, if he gets bad onto it, it stays hit. And I would have opened with the two of them, to be fair. Yeah, but uh, he's there now, and he's got to club it. Oh, he's gone! First ball! It's 
that's a good delivery from Baba is what he's done consistently all the way through this week. He's been up there full straight. The radar is spot on and he's knocked him over. But they took the Zabardasti bowling from Mohamed Babal. Yeah, disappointment for Tezvinda. He tries to horn this one across the line. It's always going to be tough to come out there and swing from the boot laces for ball one. And Baba is right on, ta on target. As he just says, give me the ball back. Well, he's two thirds of the way to a hat trick. He'll get to bowl at Taranjit Singh. Another big hitter. But I guess in the context of the game, it's another ball that isn't scored off. Now the Lions are 14 for two. Oh, he's been so good. Mommy Baba, 11 wickets up and two now, and those two there takes him up to 13. It's been exceptional bowling from him. Well, both these teams will consider themselves quite unlucky if they're knocked out. Let's, let's see what we've got now. It's up in the air, but this is catchable. Takes his time and takes the catch. It's a hat trick. Unbelievable. A hat trick taken, and what a time to take it. A hat trick. When you're trying to get your team into next week's finals week, and uh, they don't come any better or any sweeter than that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he had to go. He couldn't be defensive at all, and it just hung up in the air. It was a nice catch taken down there by Skanda Ali and Mohamed Baba. Well, he'll be so thrilled to take a hat trick in the ECL. I think the most important thing was that none of those last three balls in the over were scored off after such. Uh, a fortunate start to the over with the boundary for the Cypress team. They do finish in the worst possible way. It's 14 for 3. Last over coming up. 19 will be required. And it will be Shiraz Ahmed, the captain, that tries to close this out. Well, Ahmed, the captain. will be able to fill in that blank at the end of this over. Who will be joining us on Monday morning at AMGMT, which is 9 o'clock in Central Europe, 1.30 p.m. In India. But let's get back out there to the middle. Here's the last over of the week. 19 to win. Got to run. No, they've got to run. And uh, they do. And he's probably going to be out here. But they still decide to keep running until the decision is given. He <laughs> he's gone here. I reckon he is out. Yeah. So you're probably fine. Look, they had to do that. Because it means that Unwar will be on strike. And remember how many he scored off the last yeah, game. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think they have to run. Terrible throw initially. Yeah, I think he's gone. We'll slow it down for you as much as we can here. Yeah, it's gone. So, saves the run, basically. So that's four wickets in four balls. It's utter chaos. You wouldn't expect anything less. As Austin, well, he did contribute that boundary. But then he sacrifices himself. It does get the big hitting Kasim Anwa on strike. And he did strike three boundaries in a row this morning in the last over. He needs to do it again here. Otherwise, the team from Cyprus, they in grave danger of ending their ECL. And what, what must be going through his mind? I mean, he gets himself to the other end as Austin departs. Can he produce something that will be absolutely incredible? Five deliveries left. Well, so Shokuma will come out into the middle. And they're pretty keen to get going. So let's go. 19 off 5. It's pretty, pretty well. well. That's going to be a boundary. That's going to be four of them. And, uh, well, it's not over yet. It is not over yet. Unwak hits his first ball for four. Good hit. And uh, remember, the power play was only one over, so they can put a fielder there. Yeah. Here we go. So the captain under attack. Keep an eye on the 15 and out of four deliveries. Oh, and uh, that is a massive, massive delivery, a massive dot. Now every one of these have to go yeah. to the boundary. Well, here's the thing. You, single's no good to you now. You need to score at least two off this ball to at least stay in the game. Uh, barring an extra being bowled. And Shiraz Ahmed will probably bowl that slower ball again. It's been working for him all week. 15 off 3 required. And uh, they don't run at all. So it looks like that guy Kia Ballon and the Spanish champions are booking their place into finals week. And what a way to do it. 
I don't know. This is so disappointing for for the Punjab Lions, but still, man, they can be so proud of their efforts this week. This one's going nowhere. I think it'll probably be out. It is, and so Anwar goes. They can celebrate now. It's 18 for five. Kazi Mamwa does hit a boundary, but the Spanish flag is flying. Oh, it's Sweden this time last week. And look, on the whole, I mean, no matter how this week has ended, it's certainly not the way that anyone wanted it to end, but you would say that they are very deserving of that spot given the way that they've played their cricket this week. Yeah, I mean, you have to say that, but you have to be a little bit sad and sorry also for the Punjab lines of uh, Lucas there. there have been lines haven't they they perform so well you've got to admire what they've done this week you've got to admire the, the way they've fielded the way they've the catches they've taken they've left us some outstanding memories as the new batter comes yeah, out and Jamal. Is Jamal. He, he's the one that took that unbelievable catch one of the best catches we've ever seen yeah what a highlight for him but he's has a long sad walk out to the middle because after this ball, we'll know that Pakai can't. They will be through the Championship Week starting Monday. Well, make sure you join us for that. You don't want to be anywhere else. Here's the last ball of Group E, the group of excitement. <laughs> he just defends this, and uh, well, that's what it means that a captain. They have done it, and you'll see them scampering through now down the steps to celebrate. Pakai Kert, a lot of that have done it. And, uh, well, the Spanish flag runs onto the field of play as well, held by their coach, Malik. Sensational scenes. Back I care about one of the champions of Spain, the team from Barcelona. They are going to stay here. They're going to stay put. They're going to stay in Malaga because they have made it into finals weekend. Well, you got to feel yeah. for the Punjab Lions of Nicosia. They've been outstanding. They really have. They've had a fantastic week. And uh, no, it just didn't go their way in the final. But one thing they can say, and they can be proud of this, that they were the only team, weren't they, the only team to beat uh, back out here they beat them this yeah. morning in an incredible match what a match that was from them and uh, well they, it's going to hurt but what they've achieved this week and uh, well I tell you what not just what they've achieved but they've made friends all around the world yeah. because they produce some outstanding cricket and uh, you look at some of the highlights we've seen here this week a lot of the Punjab line because the players were, yeah. were part of that well, if you could sum it up in a world in a word I think Pak can't they are feeling relief they are feeling relief because they almost messed this up. Uh, they played such a good week of cricket. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even into Super Thursday. And they had the top seed this morning. They lost it just due to an off-run chase. And how about Mohamed Babar? About the way that he came oh, to the yeah. crease. Oh, the, or actually, was at the crease, but just turned it around. And, and well, he's a big reason that they're standing there right now. With the ole, ole, ole! Así, así me gusta. Vamos, chicos de chicos de España. Campeones de este grupo, the group E, and they've done it. And uh, what a way to do it. Look, I always say that when it comes to big matches, your big men have to perform. There's no point having these names in your team if they don't perform. And the two big men have always been for Pakakia Badalona have been Mohamed Cameron. He had to produce a performance, a match-winning performance he did with the bat. Those runs he scored were absolutely crucial because they made a difference of keeping that the required score of 33 or maybe in the region of, I don't know, 20? Yeah. But uh, that was his, that was what he did. And then with the ball, the man who's been consistent all the way through, that man there who's waving that flag at the moment, Mohamed Baba, took a hat-trick in this final. That yeah. was a massive achievement. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, yeah, they, they will just be so thrilled. And now you can see that they have joined Tunbridge Wells of England, Brigade of Ireland. Russia CC of Italy and MSC. Oh, it might be MSC Frankfurt. It'll be Albie's Army, actually. <laughs> but we'll get that fixed for you. Yeah, MSC Frankfurt on the count. Where did that come from? Oh, oh well. <laughs> I tell you what, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic achievement, though, isn't it? That they will be there in Championship Week, which only starts on Monday. So take the week off, weekend off, but then join us. Well, cue the highlights music. It won't be long because this was a pretty quick innings and a quick finish to the week. As we have a look at this card. I don't really have to get anything going. We go to the highlights though. Yeah. And uh, well, we were trying to wait to see what was going on. And in the end, we knew what was going on. And it was a three over match. After the rain cleared, 
It was time for some fireworks and Cameron, well, he was going to open up. You knew he was going to make things difficult from the men from Cyprus. Yeah, I mean, it was a difficult start. I mean, it went for Austin, but that hit of the sixth ball that went for six, that was important because that meant that was nine. And then, well, look, the first ball sliced away to a boundary. 14 was the score at that point, but then it was this. This is what happened. Mohamed Baba saying, rain or no rain, when that ball is in my hand, it's going to one place and one place only. That's onto the stump. He gets Guri, and then he gets the big one off uh, Tajwinda. Tajwinda trying to do what he's done so well. And Baba says, just give me the ball, just give me the ball, because there's more to come. And the worst, this catch was taken. That completed a hat trick. And it was Sekunda Ali, what a good moment that is from him. And Malik there, the coach, he was delighted with the performance of his team. This was, uh, well, this was the run out. And uh, what that did do, it got to Anwar on a strike. He did hit one beautiful shot here. Gets the ball here, just kept their hopes alive. But then after that, the next delivery being the dot. And then this one was scored up in the air. Really good catch again from that man, Mohamed Ishan. And what a good week he's had as well behind the stumps and with the bat. And then it was all over. And uh, delight there, Abbas. He didn't play this one because of an injury to his hand. It was a fantastic day for the Spanish champions. Didn't start that well, did it? Because they had to do it the hard way. They couldn't go straight through into the final. They lost to the Lions earlier today. They had to then take care of the farmers, and they did. And uh, they are there to fly the flag for the Spanish champions in finals week, starting on Monday. MSC Frankfurt, they must have been hacking into our systems because they thought they'd score in Group D, but yeah, that is correct now. We've got Albi Zalmi from Sweden in Group D, and Pak I Care from Espana. And the five teams will be seeing and, well, what a final we had. Look, it was sad they had to be a loser, really. But the Lions, they had to put themselves in the box seat. And ultimately, they, uh, it, was, it was a bit of a lottery, let's be honest. But, I mean, the Duckworth is designed to keep the contest fairly the same. I think they would have had to work really hard to... Uh, they had to work really hard to yeah. get those 95 runs if they were going to get that. I think it was 94 actually they needed. And they would have had to bat well and have a bit of luck to get those 33. Unfortunately, they fell just short in the end. Yeah, I mean, they did. And we see that scorecard. Well, remember, I mean, uh, you're going to look at that and say, well, that doesn't look too good, but it was a reduced match. So it was down to just 18 deliveries to try and get 33. So you knew what the batters had to try and do. And Guri there, the captain. Once again, what a great uh, tournament he's had. He scored six, and that was one hitting shot off of Mohamed uh, Cameron. What a big hit that was. Just kept a minute with nine of the first. Scott Austin, well, he, he was required to do a lot. He did get a boundary of the first ball from Baba, and then he was out. And uh, then Baba just took control. Look at those figures there. Three wickets, three on the spin. He gets a hat trick. So, well, the hat trick goes, just count goes to four now. Four hat-tricks we've had in this bet the ball European Cricket League. And, uh, well, it's probably not as sensational as the one that we saw yesterday from Kidman. But the importance of that one is massive because his bowling, well, has meant that it's back I care about Alana that have booked their place in the final. You've seen the lineup. You've seen the five teams that will be coming back and starting here on Monday, the 14th of March. What an incredible week that's going to be. All those stars coming back. But, uh, well, they've done the host. The Spanish champions have done themselves and uh, their country proud here this week at the Magical Karma Oval. Well, it has been magical. And we call Group D the group of death, Group E the group of excitement. No doubt about it. It went all the way down to essentially the last over. And, look, you've got to feel for Cyprus, of course. But, uh, you know, just looking at... All you can do is execute your skills. It's a three-over game. You have to execute your skills better in that in that three overs. And of the, the 18 deliveries or 19 deliveries, because there was a no ball in there, but we had 12 dot balls, including the wickets. 12 balls weren't scored off. Yeah. And I suppose you know, when it comes down to it, the contest was there. I mean, they needed 11 and over. So if they batted well, if they, they could maybe get kind of 8 to 10 off Kamans over it and then Mohamed Babas, it, it's meant to replicate what would have been required yeah. to chase that 94 off the 10. So I think that's why the target is the target. Uh, but ultimately, it was just pack I care. Well, kind of like they did most of the week. They executed their skills really well and uh, just didn't give Punjab Lions and Nick C much to, much to go after yeah, at look, all. It was always going to be a hard task. I'll tell you why. I mean, this, this group or this week, 
um, was all about the strength of bowling and fielding and the bowling and fielding has been exceptional there's been very few high scores I think uh, it was Pakai Kia Badalana themselves that put 142 the highest score of the week on the board against um, HBS Kainat but other than that there were very few high scores and so it, it was always going to be difficult I think for Punjab uh, Lions of Nicosia to try and get those 33 runs but they had the firepower to do it I still think there was a little technical error there in this select from the batting order. I mean, uh, Scotty Austin is a good bat. I think he, I, I believe he should have been opening for them earlier in the week, probably opening all the time, but not in a match when you only got 80 balls and you need big hitters yeah. to hit the ball. But the issue was, it was how they were going to handle the six balls from Cameron. I just think, I think they were confident that that, that Guru in Tajwinder could really get after Cameron so that they. They went another way, but uh, look, uh, i got to say credit to Pujab Lion to Kazia. They oh, were yeah, the real absolutely. surprise packets of the week. Uh, and they were expertly coached by Richard Cox. They were well led by Kupa Tat Singh. Thank you to all of all of those all those guys. And not just them, but everyone else that we, we lost out of the tournament today. Of course, Hubby Cryin Uh They were knocked out. Uh, and then uh, Farmers of Jersey as well. So they've all provided a lot of entertainment. Even, you know, the, the teams that didn't make it yeah. to this, this finals day uh, in Group E, they provided tremendous excitement. And uh, they certainly wish to, to see them go well in their domestic seasons. And who knows, we might even see them uh, back again. We'll see Marlowe again probably in a couple of weeks in That's Portugal. Right. Yeah. And also yet Corfu. And we'd love to see them again on ECN in 2022. So look, let's have a look at what's coming up Monday. Because now we can fill in the gaps, can't we? And we're going to have five T10 matches to start off Championship Week. And we're going to see Tumbridge Wells versus Brigade. The Irish, they'll be here and actually Thursday next week, St. Patrick's Day. So it could be very festive here. And I'm sure they'll be bringing a lot of fans. A lot of people asking, well, Chris Williams, will he have a new bat phone? He said he's been charging it up. So we'll get to see him in match one. That's basically Group A versus Group B. Uh, and then we've got Group C versus Group D in match two. We'll see Pack I Care join the party in match three and match five against Brescia CC. I mean, look at that last match of the day. I mean, Pack I Care, Badalona versus Brescia CC. I mean, we're going to see some fireworks, aren't we, in Championship Week? There's going to be fireworks all around. I mean, Tunbridge Wells, we know what they bought um, in their Group A brigade as well. They're just, there's so many. I mean, you just look at that and so many good cricketers and uh, comes to mind here that there's just going to be so many feisty uh, battles going on there between bat versus ball and that's what this European cricket is all about it's about the battle of bat versus ball yeah and all these teams they've had to to go through so many trials to even get to the ECL I mean mentioned there a brigade from London Derrick in Northern Ireland they had to uh, basically do an all Ireland playoff yeah. to even get here I think about uh, the fact that Pack I Care that we just saw they had to win the Spanish Championship weekend to uh, to qualify, which was a hotly contested yeah, series as well. You know. Each one of these teams has a story, yeah. but only five teams, their story has continued into Championship Week. The top five European cricket clubs, they'll be going head-to-head -head next week, so make sure you join us for that. 8 a.m. GMT, which is 9 o'clock in Central Europe. It's 1.30 p.m. in India. Just before we go, and we're running out of light as well, uh, thanks to all the, the crew, the ground staff, uh, to the ECN Blue crew as well. Our production crew, Spring Productions, couldn't do it without you. Happy yeah. birthday, Martins, again. Hope you're having a great birthday. We started enjoying it a little bit early on. Also, happy birthday to ECN founder, Daniel Weston. Yeah. What, what a prize he got today because we had three out of the four really close games. You wouldn't expect anything less in this group of excitement. Uh, but thanks to all of you guys, really. Thanks for sticking with us. I know it was a bit frustrating in the final. But, uh, well, we're trying to control as many things as we can, but we 